And welcome to a not muted, very special live stream playthrough of RuneScape Kingdoms, an incredible new board game from Steamforged Games that is based on RuneScape. You may be familiar with this uh, classic. Classic <laughs> MMO. Am I totally embarrassing myself when I say that? Um, no. <laughs> no. Great. Okay. That's right. It is an MMO. You uh, nailed it. You know, there's old school RuneScape, there's RuneScape 3, and then there's this board game that appeases all of those very divisive fans <laughs> from Steamforged Games. And today uh, we have three incredible players joining me. First, we have Jamie Perkins of Steamforged. Hello, Jamie. Hello. How's it going? So good. Thank you. How you doing? Doing very well. Looking forward to, uh, to jumping into this. It's going to be fun. Me too, and you are a resident expert. Uh-oh, we're getting a alert. Thank you so much for the restub sprinkles. Uh, and uh, not a stranger to this particular live stream, we have master game master, game designer, and today just a fun time player, Mr. Richard August. Hello, good to be back. And I'm just sorry for everybody who didn't hear your first intro. It was poetry. Oh, no. Liquid poetry. No one, no one, no one will ever. That Nobody was just for you. I was impressed by the iambic pentameter. That was just oh, so cool how you did that. Just and off the, the cuff, beatboxing. Was... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But never again. And thanks so much to our raiders. Hello, Blunderbuss TV. Last but not least, the other half of Good Time Society, Hello. my dear friend, Mr. Jake Michaels. Good morning, Becca. Good morning, chat, and good evening to Jamie and Richard. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're joining us from the UK. We're keeping them up late, but what better way to spend your evening than working? No, then <laughs> then playing. Playing a very fun board game over <laughs> Tabletopia today. Uh, so I'm gonna kick it over to Jamie, who can teach us the overview of RuneScape Kingdoms and jump us in to our little gameplay here today. So Jamie, take it away. No problem. Thank you much for that, uh, Becca. So yeah, we're playing RuneScape Kingdoms today. Uh, this is a cooperative narrative campaign board game for one to five players. Of course, there's four of us playing this time. Uh, we'll be playing through the first campaign of the core box, which is also our demo for uh, RuneScape Kingdoms, which is the Vampire Slayer campaign. So uh, what we've tried to do with the board game is to recreate the, uh, the open world or sandbox experience of the video games give you lots of different things that you can do in the board game so you can go around exploring the land you can go on side quests you can um you can go and level your skills which is something you know is a, is a very famous pastime for runescape players just grinding their skills up to 99 if they want to you can do that in the board game if you want um so but to give to kind of give the experience kind of to bookends and start and finish points uh, we've taken some of the more iconic quests from the early to mid game uh, the video games uh, and we've turned those into our campaigns so in our case that's vampire slayer where we'll be playing against um the uh, the story to to track through and find out how what's going on with Draenor Village, find out there's a vampire going on there, uh, who's uh, who's terrorizing the villagers, find out how to slay a vampire, and then eventually try try and take down Count Draenor, uh, and then everything we're going to get to up to along the way as well. Um, so we can just uh, can just dive straight into the action. Actually, um, we've got ourselves a little bit of campaign cards to set ourselves the scene. So these are sort of going to be tracking the escalating um, danger of the situation as we go along. And as the longer it takes for us to deal with the situation with Count Draenor, the more dangerous the situation overall is going to become. So, um, so if uh, who should we have first? We have Richard. Do you want to mind reading this Vampire Awakens card for us, please? Does that things up? Yeah, that, that card over there. I'm hovering on that Vampire. Yeah. In the crypt beneath Draenor Manor. Count Draenor awakens to sate his thirst for blood. Good morning, so Count Draenor. In the <laughs> village in Draenor Manor, which we're already done. Yep. Collect Vault Card 38 and shuffle it into the Lumbridge Exploration deck. Then collect Vault Card 23 and place it on top. 10 out yep. of so 10 already... for flavor card voiceover. Thank you. <laughs> So, uh, so we've already done that uh, off camera. We've set those things up already. You can see the danger tokens down here for Draenor Village uh, and Draenor Manor. Uh, those oh, cards no. have already been shuffled into the exploration deck. So those are some nasty surprises waiting for us. We've also uh, deployed our adventurers onto the game board. I'm going to be playing as the archer today. Um, I think, is it Jake, you were going to be playing as the wizard? Uh, yes. Um, Becky going to be taking on the knight and 
that leaves the skiller for Richard. So just to explain to the audience, these um, these characters we're playing as, they don't have any pre pre-prescribed play styles. Uh, just like in the RuneScape video games, your character is a blank slate to start off with. You can skill them in any way you like. Even if you're playing as a heavily armored knight miniature, you can skill them up in, uh, in ranged and magic and cooking and and crafting if you want to. It's entirely up to you. It's just it's just a visual representation. So it's you can pick whichever miniature you like to look on best. Um, okay, so let's jump straight into our first turn as an example uh, and we're going to go to richard and if you want to just explain for us what you're doing as you as you go through your choices for us please richard will do so uh as i understand it i get to move once you do indeed and then explore a location so i am going to go over here yep so you've gone and to the farmland i have indeed gone to farmland because i like the look of those eggs so i draw <laughs> i'm going to explore so i draw a card from the deck that's correct there are usually three, it's broken into three quests for each of the three provinces around the capital. So, so I am in the farmland, so I read the farmland quest, which is a number of dead cows cover a nearby field. Farmer Groats might let you take some leather. So I can then make a complexity three. So I'll just talk about skill tests for a second. Uh, Becca, okay, you can so hit, real quick, Becca, you can hit spacebar on that card and it'll go full screen for the viewers to see what's listed there. Thank you. Yes. It's not because I was doing other things to the overlay that I was. Yeah, no, the overlay is <laughs> great though. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, as you can see there for that skill test on the right-hand side of the farmland bit at the bottom of the card, you've got a gathering skill icon that tells you that it's a skill test in the gathering skill. Uh, and the number at the top is a three, that's the complexity of the test. And the number at the bottom is a four, that's the target number. So um, the number at the bottom is what you actually have to roll on your dice. Any one of your dice that you roll, has to, as long as they get a four or more, you've passed the test. Um, the top number is going to tell us how many dice Richard gets to roll. So um, it's his gathering skill we want to look at. And his gathering skill, because we've only just started the game, is one. So because it's less than the complexity, he's only going to get to roll one die. Uh, if he had gathering skill three, so it was equal to the complexity, he'd roll two dice. And if it was above three, he'd roll three dice. You're either underneath at one, equal to it, two, or above at three. Additionally, the results that uh, he's trying to get here, uh, one die needs to equal four. We don't total the results and it needs to exceed four, right? That's correct. Thank you, Jake. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So one, as long as one of the dice gets a four, he passes. So Richard, if you want to give that a roll for us, we'll see if you passed your first okay. skill test, um, which you do. Passed. Okay. Which gives me some delicious leather. It does indeed. Okay. <laughs> That's not how you use it. <laughs> no, it's not, not for that, that part of the cow. No. <laughs> use it for your um, bag. If so, I get to uh, 99 in cooking, I can make anything taste nice. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Then it's just it's jerky, I guess. So um, whenever you take a skill test, whether you pass it or fail it, you also get to add an experience point to that skill. So uh, because Richard took a, a gathering skill test, he gets to put an experience token on his gathering skill on his character sheet. Um, once he's gotten to three experience points in gathering, he takes the tokens off and he gains a level. So as you can tell, just by taking experience, uh, just by through taking skill tests over the course of the game, you're going to be gaining experience in a lot of different skills. Okay, so uh, anything else you want to do with your turn, Richard? I think there's some eggs there you can um, if I've explored, I get to take a I get to take one of the resources indicated on the on the province flag, right? Correct, correct. So I will take some lovely eggs, which when combined with my leather. <laughs> I, does that, does, does, intrigued, does that combine? Makes them shiny. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Add some protein. Egg wash, like egg wash on your leather. There that you go. Oh. <laughs> Look, back in the day they did what they could. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Richard has just given us an example turn there of moving and exploring. Um, the other thing you can do during your turn after you've moved is a quest action if you have an open quest um, to play with. So whether that's whether you have a side quest to do in the region or you've got your quests on the campaign board here. So the first of our campaign quests is actually to speak to Morgan. Um, so we'll just have a, a quick read of that. Um, the people of Draenor Village live in constant terror. Their numbers are dwindling, all due to the foul creature lurking in the manor to the north, known as the vampire. One villager, Morgan, seeks aid. An adventurer in Draenor Village with one or more defense can perform the following action. Speak to Morgan by collecting Vault Card 1. So that's open to any of us. And that's if any of us complete that action, then that's us progressing through the main story of the game. Okay. So what we're going to do now is move around the table and pass the turn to Becca. Uh, you're stood on Edgeville at the moment. What would you like to do with your turn? Excellent. Well, chat, you're coming along with me. We are the knight who I'm going to give a name to. Uh, actually, I need chat to name our knight. And generally speaking, we have our group goal. I have bandit hunting. Duke Horatio seeks help hunting down bandits who have fled from Lumbridge. This is like my personal 
side quest. That's it. And I need to go to Lumbridge. So let's check the map and see. Did so you you've <gasps> so, so, no. so because we've we've given you a side quest to start off with, that would if you didn't have the side quest, you could accept it in Lumbridge, but you've already you've already got the side quest. So the next part of the card is the Ifis Adventure is in Black Knight's Fortress. Oh so you're now actually hunting down the bandit in Black Knight's Fortress. Keep reading. Got it. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to vaguely go in that direction, which is nearby. Actually, I can get there this turn. You can. But I I know that uh, like maxing out my melee as a knight, uh, someone showed me in our practice playthrough that that's like pretty OP. So <laughs> I'm tempted to go towards Goblin Village and get that melee skill. But you know what? We're right here. So let's move. And then instead of exploring the Black Knight's Fortress, I shall quest here. That's it. So we take a look at that bandit hunting card again. Uh, and it says, so if this adventure is in Black Knight's Fortress, they can perform the following action, slay the bandits. And that gives you a melee uh, skill test to take, okay. which is complexity one. And you need to roll a six. Yeah. So let me just recap for, uh, and I'll say it real slow for viewers because this is the part that tripped me up. I get an extra die because uh, my skill in melee is above this one die rating there. That's yes. it. Yeah, because it's high. Because it's higher, you're gonna get to roll three. three dice. Three. Okay. Perfect. And then, um, does my bronze longsword give me an extra die here? It does indeed, yes. Yeah. So uh, it says it's going to add an extra die to your melee skill tests uh, as long as they're complexity two or less. And it is because oh, nice. it's complexity one. Heck so you're yeah. actually going to get to roll all, all four. Them bones. Okay, I'm going to grab them all. And as long as one of them gets a six, then you pass the test. We'll see. I don't want to, you know, count any chickens before I've rubbed their egg yolks all over my armor. <laughs> <laughs> or leather, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. We got an eight. Well That's and a ten. So plenty, nice. plenty of successes. You did. Knocked it out of the park. Okay, so um, so you, you can read the bottom of your uh, side quest card. The um, bandit has the... been slain and the quest is complete. That's it. So you get to have one a melee experience point because you took the melee test in addition to your rewards for the side quest, which is another four. So you get five total melee experience. Where do we uh, find and... out the four? Oh, plus four XP so... up here. <gasps> yeah, it's at the top there. Okay. So uh, you also get to take, uh, I think it's three gold pieces as well. So yeah. we'll get that for you. Thank you. Okay. So for the XP, I go one, two, three, plus the fourth for winning the test. So that gives me one full level. Oh, how do we, do we yep. double click? I think you, uh, you mouse see. roll. Yeah, you mouse, mouse roll it up, yeah. Okay, got it. Um, and then and one then you... XP towards a, an additional level. That's it. So you got four for the side quest, uh, as you've added, and then one additional for actually taking the melee test as well. So you're actually a bit closer to the next level as well. So Wait, we got what? Like the, one for doing my side quest. So four for the top of the card. Yeah. Um, and then one extra for actually just taking the melee skill test as well. So five total. Oh, of course. Oh, Sorry. right. Um, you get one for just yeah, doing yeah. it. Yeah. I was yeah, uh, when, adding four whenever, plus one equals four. That's my that's bad it. on the math. When, whenever you take a skill test, you get a pass or fail. You get an experience. Point. Right. Right. Just for trying. Okay. Um, and then quick sidebar uh, names. We got Sir Quest a lot. Uh, good as Societus and Sir Don Ch Chevalier. Chevalier? Anyway, um, we're we're gonna go with uh, this is Sir Side Quest. It's a side quest. Yeah. It's a side, side quest. quest. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I think that would bring your turn to a close, Becca, which brings it around to Jake. Great. Uh, meet my wizard who's hanging out at well, where am I? Falador. Mm -hmm. Falador. Uh, we'll call him Mister Normal. Big fan of Doctor Strange. <laughs> Um, and actually, let's talk about my side quest real quick. I, mine is also, or mine's at the Goblin Village. It's called Goblin Diplomacy. General Bent Nose and Wartface can't agree on which color their tribe should wear. They're having a fashion debate, apparently. Uh, help them solve their dispute so the world doesn't have to worry about rioting goblins. And then if I go to the um, village, I can try and steal all their old clothes and present them to the generals as an alternate option. Okay, I love that. That's very That's mischievous. It. So I'm going to head in that direction, I think. I'll um, I'll stroll on over to Taverly, and I'll take the Explore. Act. Oh, actually, I'm really close to Draenor Village, aren't I? Am I the closest of our group? So, yeah. So Draenor Manor's next to you. You'd be, you could be, get to Draenor Village to turn after. Ooh. Yeah, but I'd have to go through the vampire's lair to get more information about the vampire. 
That's true. Yes, you uh, might know. It's okay if you want to skip on that for the time being. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm really tempted though. Um, you know what? Let's live life. Why not? Or let's potentially die. Either way. Uh, <laughs> let's go to Draenor Manor and let's just do a normal explore. Okay. So cool. we're going to pull a Lumbridge Exploration card for you. Sadly, this was the deck that we threw extra cards in because of the Vampire Awakens card. Oh, it's sad. So you have run into Count Draenor. You want to play that first? <laughs> Ooh. Of course. I mean, this is, this what, is what I asked star. for. I said, I'm going to go to his house and see what happens. And of course, he comes outside and greets me. Gout, yeah. Count Draenor stalks the night. This is not the time for a confrontation. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. Uh, fortunately, the surroundings <laughs> offer adequate places to hide so long as you can make use of the shadows. I love that this test is simply hide. Just get away. <laughs> All right. So uh, it's a skill of three. Uh, is that stealth? Uh, thieving. Thieving. And I need to get a target of seven. Well, um, I'm fairly certain I have done no thieving in my life, which puts me at one die, which, yep. or excuse me, one skill, which gives me thus one die. Correct. Um, my staff of air doesn't help me hide. In fact, it's probably worse because it's always whooshing, making noise. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're going to just take a roll and we're going to see what happens. Seven or higher. That means I got a, was that a 40% chance? I think so. Yeah, 40%. Yeah. Okay. That's not bad. Unfortunately, well, it was bad. <laughs> so the 60% outcome occurred, and it says if you fail, you suffer two wounds and advance the escalation track one. Okay, so the escalation track is this track at the side of the game board over here. Um, so whenever things happen in the game board, uh, like when it says to advance the escalation track there, we'll move the token up by another one. Uh, the other way you can move the escalation track up normally is by whenever you step on a capital region. Those are the big banners on the game board. Okay. Um, so whenever this token gets to the top, it'll reset and we'll draw the next campaign card and more of these danger tokens and bad exploration cards are going to get thrown into exploration decks. It's like a little timer just to make sure that we, uh, we're not taking too long in dealing with the threat of Count Draenor. Great. Yeah. So I think my wizard quest would never. <laughs> I think my wizard just tried to hide in some hedges, but he was just trying to pretend to be a hedge, which she's in robe, so it didn't work. Um, no, hedge wizard. Then. So I take two wounds, right? Of which we have, which we have, uh, three uh, health points total in this game. Right? That is true. That is true. So if you take a third one, you're gonna have a bit of a meeting with death, like um, quite literally. I'm very excited about that. All right, I think that's my turn. Okay, so we come back to me. Oh, so wait, right, so real quickly, what did the uh, did that marker ex uh, accelerate anything else that we need to note? Uh, so the, the red danger the danger token, do you mean? Or yeah, yeah. Which one? Okay, so what that would do is <clears throat> if you were rolling more than one die, you just have to, in your skill test, you'd reduce the amount of dice you're rolling by once so because you're already <laughs> rolling one. Like you were, you were probably it never It couldn't have gotten one worse, one. essentially. Okay. No, Chat has no, a yeah. question for you, Jamie. Sure. Is it possible to play this demo online for anyone or uh, only for so us the moment privileged? At the moment, we've only got it open for the privileged few. Uh, however, we are strongly considering, uh, well, if not strongly considering, we are going to open it up to the public. We're just deciding when we're going to be doing that. So it is going to be something people are going to get the chance to play with themselves. Awesome. Largely based on how nice people in chat are to us. Oh, that's true. Okay. That's true. Bribery. That's a big, big thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so I'm going to come back to my turn, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another one of the ways you can move around the game board other than just moving to adjacent uh, provinces, because I want to skip all the way to Lumbridge. So one of the things you can do is you can spend a gold piece uh, to do like a home teleport. To You can be from anywhere on the game board, and, and you can go to any one of the five uh, capital regions. So I'm going to go skip straight over to Lumbridge by spending a gold piece. Okay, uh -oh. you have, Sorry, do you on. have to be in a capital city? You know, you can be, okay. you can, you can teleport from anywhere, but it's only to a capital region. Uh, sounds like you're giving us an escalation, ex uh, you know, the track. Yes, the escalation track is going to look by one. That's true. Uh, it is, but it's okay. We can deal with that later. That's not a problem right now. It's going to be a problem much later on. Um, like many <laughs> okay, things so, that uh, escalate. Exactly. So, uh, so I'm going to explore Lumbridge now that I'm there, uh, and I'm going to take some, uh, some lumber because. That's what I can take for exploring Lumbridge, interestingly. Uh, and I can spend some gold pieces to get some experience here. So I could spend one gold piece to get an experience in magic or cooking, uh, or two gold pieces to get experience in ranged or defense. If I had lots of gold, I could actually do all of that at least you know, once each. Um, so because I do have a bow and some archery skills, I'm going to spend my other two gold pieces to get an experience point in ranged. Okay, whilst I'm there. Uh, and that is going to be the end of my turn. So we come back to Richard. Excellent. Well, I am going to go to Barrack. And I'm going to spend two gold pieces to improve my crafting. Yep, so you get crafting because experience. I am a skiller, and I feel that is something I should start getting better at. Uh, so 
There we go. And then I get, uh, is that a leather? Uh, yes, that's leather as well. So I shall also token. get myself additional leather. And that is my turn. Okay, so we also put the escalation track up for you as well. Uh, and then we come round to Becca's turn. All right. Or Sir Quest a lot, sorry. Sir Quest a lot. Do I get another side quest? So you can. There's uh, a bar, of, a little bar of side quests over here. Um, so you've got armor for a hero, Gertrude's cat, uh, bandit hunting, Kate, and wanted. Now some of these quests you can only pick up in certain places. In fact, all of them. So uh, you'd have to be in Tavoli for armor for a hero. You'd have to be in Varrock for Gertrude's cat. You'd have to be in Lumbridge for bandit hunting, Kate, and Falador for wanted. So um, I think the closest one to you Ooh. might be I Varrock think... actually, or Falador. Varrock or Falador. Um... Or or you could spend a gold piece to just jump to one of those places, one of the capital regions. Yeah, well, that sounds fun. Um, I'm also interested in that goblin village where I can increase my melee. Looks like mm -hmm. Varrock is another place. Is there a limit of number of people who can be in on, on any space? Nope, nope. We could all go to the same place if we want to. Oh, we can have a party. Okay. Well, if Falador is a side quest, let's check it out. I'm going to pay a gold piece to fast travel there. Okay. Let me get rid of that gold. Here we go. Done. Paid. Okay, so um, I don't think you've got any... Yeah, I haven't got any quests open at the moment for Falador. So uh, you can explore Falador, which increases the escalation track by one. Uh, and you can spend more gold to get experience points in the skills that are on Falador. So it's one gold for crafting, two gold for gathering, two gold for cooking. Or right. you can do none of, none of those if you don't want to do any of them. And remind me, the side quest, once I'm in Falador, I may just grab it? Yep. You know, now that you're there, you can just take it as part of the turn. Okay, yep. I'm taking Wanted... Uh, okay. Let's see. And then eventually it's going to want me to go back to Black Knight's Fortress, my favorite place to be. And I'll need either um, hmm, a higher role in, in gathering or something in thieving. I'm already decent at thieving, so let me keep working on that skill if I can. What was over here? Oh, no, no, no. No thieving. Um, all right, I'm going to go for uh, gathering. So you spend two gold and you can get one experience point in gathering. Let's do it. Money's for spending. It is. Uh, and you can pick up some thread as well. I'll get that for you. So some thread token because you've explored. Ooh. Nice. Okay. And that's it okay. for me. It is, yeah. One of the things that's probably not relevant for us straight away, but will be later in the game, is when you're in a capital region and you explore, you can also access the clan banks. This is how we're going to... One of the best ways of sharing resources and equipment that we've got as well. So... Um, so let's say that if you want, if you want, not suggesting you should, but let's say if you wanted to, so let's say I needed the thread that you just picked up, you could drop it into the clan bank, which we'll just put underneath the, uh, the campaign board. And that anybody else that explores uh, a capital region could then go and take anything out of the clan bank and put stuff into the clan bank. So it's a good way of transferring items and resources. Et if you did want to leave that thread in there, that would be great because it means I can do some crafting on some sweet leather body armor. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, leave it in Falador or just the group bank? Uh, in the in the group back. I will, and I will also give you a compliment from chat. Richard August, a king and an emperor, yet somehow so humble, kind, good-looking, and a voice like velvet. Uh, Justin mm. wants to know if he can get the demo. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, there's an ulterior well, Justin, motive. You've, you've definitely managed to identify my best features, so well done. <laughs> Okay, so I think that's probably the end of your turn, Becca, which means we come back around to Jake. Yes, right. I uh, am bleeding heavily from being uh, scratched, I guess, by the vampire. If you bit me, that'd be a lot more problem. Um, Claude, Claude, probably. Claude, thank you. Uh, at Draenor Manor, because I did a quest action, I didn't get to um, get a resource from that space, right? Because that's only if you explore. Oh, yeah, you, you, did, you did explore, so you do get second resource. I forgot that. That's about, oh, that's Jamie. considered an explore. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, so because um, you drew an exploration Oh, right, card. I did explore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. So okay. so uh, yeah. So if you if you wanted to go to Draenor Village, that's where you could do it. Oh, yeah, we're going to get some questing done, right? So we're going to Draenor Village, and we're going to say hi to Morgan. So I'll okay. re recall what it said, which was that the people of Draenor Village live in constant terror. The numbers are dwindling due to the foul creature lurking in the manor to the north. Uh, Morgan seeks aid and we draw his card because I just have a defensive one and here he is there you go. So now you've now got an encounter with an NPC and you got to see what he says please please help us bold adventurer 
Our little village has been dreadfully ravaged by an evil vampire. He lives in the basement of the manor to the north. We need someone to get rid of him once and for all. I have a friend who is a retired vampire hunter. His name is Dr. Harlow. He may be able to give you some tips. He can normally be found in the Blue Moon Inn in Varak. Perfect. I gain three coins and one defensive XP. You do indeed. And Thank a you. friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so you've also completed our first campaign quest so we've put an RS token on the campaign board so once we've filled all the rest of these campaign slots that's our campaign complete and we can go and actually have any, a boss encounter with Count Drano. we'll be ready for that boss fight sweet yeah. uh, uh, I took my gold and my XP and I think that's it for me it is that's the end of your turn okay <gasps> so the next part of our camp okay sorry <laughs> exactly what you're about to say might relate to me <laughs> yeah, possibly. Uh, so we'll have a look. So the next part of our campaign quest is speak to Dr. Harlow. So Dr. Harlow is willing to help you in your quest, but first his lips must be wetted by a beer newly brewed. An adventurer in Varrock with thieving two or more can perform the following action. Get your hands on a newly brewed beer and then speak to Dr. Harlow by collecting vault card two. Was that related to you, Becca? Well, I don't have a newly brewed beer, but I do have two or more evade and I'm in Varrock. Yeah, you have the thieving skills the thieving. to go and get that newly brewed beer. Yes, you do indeed. Um, okay, so the strong inference there, but you're going to get that by illegal methods. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So I think it's actually going to come around to. So if your turn's finished, Jake, that's going to come around to my turn. Yeah. So if that's something we're going to leave to Becca to fix when it comes down to her turn, I can leave that alone. So what do I want to do? I probably want to focus on my side quest, which is the cook's assistant. So, I, um, quick question: Am I allowed to not move on my turn? Uh, you can stay still, yes. But you're actually you're in because um, you're playing uh, sequest line. You're in Falador right now, so you'd need to spend a gold to teleport to Barak. I lied um, to go speak to. I knew I was at a place with a big manor. Yeah. Banner. <laughs> um, okay, so so I have the flower and the fruit needed for my. Uh, cook's assistant quest. Uh, I just need to collect some eggs. The palace cook needs help preparing meals for several important people. First up, a cake for Duke Horatio. Uh, so to advance this quest, I've got to cook a cake in Lumbridge. So I need to get some eggs first. I'm actually already in Lumbridge, but I need to get some eggs. So I'm going to go back to farmland. Uh, Richard did it. Richard went earlier. Collect some more eggs. Uh, and I'm going to explore. Farmland, fend off some raiders to earn the farmer's favor. So I can actually take a ranged test if I want to, and I'm going to do that because I'm trying to skill in ranged. Uh, it's a complexity one, which means I'm going to get to roll uh, three dice on it. Because and the options there on the right, sorry to interrupt, are, are choices, right? You can choose to do yeah. melee, which has a lower target number, but a higher skill, or you could choose to do ranged with less skill, but higher number. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to choose the range one, especially because that's where I want my experience. Uh, so I'm going to get to roll three of the gray dice because my skill is higher than one. Uh, and I've also got my wooden short bow, which gives me an extra equipment die on low complexity tests. Oh. Okay. So if any of you roll a seven, that's going to get me to pass, which it does. Um, pass the test. So I get an experience point in ranged first. And then we get the benefits of the card, which says I can gain a gold piece. So I got some money as well, which is great because I was out of cash. Okay. And that is nearly my turn done. I nearly forgot to explore and get my eggs. So I now have those. And I have everything I need to go and bake my cake. And that is my turn done. Back to Richard. Oh, back to me. I'm going to spend the gold. Yep. To hot foot it over to Falador. Yep. Um, and then I am going to attempt to craft some sweet leather body armor. Okay. Um, so that is a complexity two crafting test, needing a six. So I've got two in crafting, so I'll be rolling two dice. Is that right? That's that's correct, yeah. yeah. Um, and you have all the resources you need. You've got the two levels. And, have, and well. I have also a spare lever, because mm -hmm. if you fail uh, a crafting challenge like this, you can do it again, but you have to discard one of your resources. And I've that's got it, an yeah, additional please. lever just in case you know that these things don't work out for me on this roll. To be clear, you're up you're upgrading this, right? Yeah, that's correct. He's, and so then, he's going to be that's my, sorry, yes, I am upgrading my leather body armor. And what's that symbol on the far right that you don't have there? I missed that. The candy uh, or something? Oh, the, I uh, gave the, him candy. The, the, the thread. The so thread, that's why. Yeah, sorry, yeah, I collect the thread. Oh, it's over in the middle. I I'm see back. it. Okay, I just didn't see it there. Yep. Yeah, it's yes, because that's why. That's why I went to Falador so we could collect some. That's why I went to Falador. 
It was all very carefully planned out in my head, and then I missed a step when I got there. That's what I, I do no. have the resources. I got a nine and a ten, so it is crafted. So mm-hmm. I can upgrade this, so I can now collect Vault Card 20. There you go. Now, did you even need to go to Falador? Because I put it in the, the bank, and the banks are no, publicly traded. But I, do, I could have stayed where I was, but for my next turn, I want to get to Port Sarim, which is just next to Falador. So I'm uh, planning ahead. Smart. Okay, so uh, we've we've now exchanged uh, Richard's leather body armor for some studded leather body armor. So instead of only working on complexity tests of one or two, this can work all the way up to four now. So it's much better and more difficult defense tests for him. Okay. Ooh, and it looks cool with the studs. Yeah. Looks less good with an egg wash, though, unfortunately. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tastes better, all. though. Yeah, it does taste better. <laughs> okay, so we've come back around to Becca's turn. So... Do you think you're going to go and uh, go to Varric and speak to Dr. Harlow for us? I think that uh, on since our escalation track is really getting towards the end, it does make sense to maybe focus on this primary mission. Mm-hmm. It won't mean we have to go slay the vampire right away, right? Just uh, talking no, to a doctor. Yeah, no. Great. That's it. So I will quest. Now, quick question. I do have to move at the beginning of my turn before I either explore or quest. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay. But to, to, to speak to, to Dr. Harlow, you're going to need to probably spend a gold piece to go and teleport over to Varrock, which is this yellow banner over here. Woo! Boop. And yeah. one gold. Nice okay. teleportation noise. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. All right, okay, let's so, speak to the doc. There you go. So here is your uh, Dr. Harlow vampire slayer card. Vampires. It's very <laughs> good to get on them once. You're going to need a stick, otherwise it'll just regenerate. Not just any piece of wood will do. Get a branch from the ancient evergreen at the foot of White Wolf Mountain. Ooh. Although it's less cooperative than it used to be. You'll need a hammer as well to drive it in properly. Rookie <laughs> mistake, stake with no hammer. <laughs> your everyday Use hammer your fist! Won't do. You'll need to craft something specific. There is a rumor of a master craftsman living in the south of Port Sarum. My friend's going there. One last thing. <laughs> it's wise to carry garlic with you. Vampires are somewhat weakened if they can smell garlic. The more the better. Mm, especially okay. with a good egg on the side. Mm-hmm. Mm. I get three coins and one XP at thieving. And now we know we need a steak, a hammer, and garlic. That is correct. So we've completed the next part of our Vampire Slayer campaign quest. Hold on. Uh, quick, so now. I feel like yeah. this doctor just told us what is clearly evident on this piece of paper right in front of us that's true but he didn't know that was there so he thought he was being a real yeah. genius and helping us out but he didn't know we were like yeah uh-huh we already we already know this like i got no it dude else, yeah. i've been studying we invited him to play but he he was too busy drinking yeah that's true <laughs> that's true he was incredibly patronizing he was like vampires i know what that is yeah. okay so uh so we now have three uh parts of our quest to go and do at the same time well we can do them in any order we like so we've got to get the wreath of garlic so anybody with uh cooking skill three or more can and can uh collect vault card three um, in any region. Oh, anywhere. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, we've got to get a stake. So it says to get a branch from the ancient evergreen at the foot of White Wolf Mountain. So we have to place the evergreen token uh, into Tavoli. Uh, this is where I'm going to point out the graphic design for the game is not entirely finished yet, as I point to this uh, evergreen token. <laughs> um, and um, someone has to go and speak to the tree, basically, try and convince it to give us a stake mm. in Tavoli. Uh, and the last one is a hammer. So uh, an adventurer in Port Sarim with three crafting or more can perform the following action, speak to Thurgo by collecting Vault Card 9. So there's three different things we can do. Uh, we need to kind of divide and conquer on this as well, find out who's best for what. I know someone very close to three caf- crafting skill that's headed to Port Tarum. Sarum. That's Sarum. That is true. Yeah. That's perfect. Pretty, pretty great guy in a chef's hat. Yeah. <laughs> We gotta get a close up on the chef's hat here. There we go. <laughs> uh, does that make it my turn? Uh, it does indeed. Yes. Okay, great. So um, I'm jealous that Becca saw a doctor because I desperately need one. I still have two wounds. Uh, remind <laughs> me how healing works in this game. Okay, so uh, we need to get some food for you to eat, basically. As, it, as with all video games, you have to heal by eating something very rapidly. Um, <laughs> and. Um, so what uh, we need to do is find a way to actually cook some food. So that's going to probably be helped by me completing my cook's assistant side quest because that's going to, for completing that, I'm going to get a recipe to bake cakes, which is how we're going to get access to food. 
<laughs> oh, I love it that cake is what's going to fi fix this. I do have um, some plants that I gathered. I'm not sure which uh, resource that is called. Um, uh, that's, that's herbs. Yeah. Herbs. Okay, great. And so that could make a salad, I presume. It could, yes. Uh, so it depends on what recipe you get. Um, right. Um, but yeah, those 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 ingredients or the recipes, not the recipes, sorry, the ingredients on their own can't give you health. Back. The okay, so you have to cook something that is nutritious. Correct. Got it. Yeah, can't, well, can't eat raw food. In the meantime, while we're, I'm waiting for someone to cook me lunch, I suppose I should just go to the Wizard's Tower because that's where I'm from. So hopefully there'll be something interesting there. Now, because there's uh, two escalation markers in this region, anywhere I go in this region is going to be a little more dangerous. Is that right? Uh, no, because they'd have to be for that particular area right. that you're in. Because so it's on no, the cards uh, themselves. Okay, cool. Remember, you mentioned escalation. We should have moved that up for Becca's last turn for going to Oops. Bark. Okay, that's okay. So, uh, uh, so we need to think. We need to draw you an exploration card. I imagine. Yeah, I'm gonna explore the Wizard's Tower for sure. Okay, and we'll have a look at that. Oh, Oops. I did it. Sorry, that was me. Uh, lumber. Uh, let's see, Lumbridge. Let's see, and this was just in general in the region, right? Yep, so if there's only one option, it takes place no matter where you are. Holy cow, this is another difficult test. Something has the castle guard on edge. Gee, I wonder what. Steal past <laughs> them to avoid being held up. At my own wizard's tower? Come on. All right, uh, this is a skill nine, which I do not have. Uh, target number is six. Okay, so 50% chance this time. Yep. It's a coin flip. And let's see what happens. Okay, the escalation will increase if, if I fail. All right. Mm-hmm. It's a nine. We succeeded. Nice. And so I get my, uh, let's see, thieving. Is that right? Up yep, experience point three. thieving. And uh, so this wizard's tower symbol is actually the magic symbol, right? So that means that I could choose to level my skill up there or something? That's correct, yeah. So you can discard any of the resources you've got as long as they're different resources to gain up to three experience in that skill. So you could discard all three of those if you want to, and each one of them is an experience point. In uh, magic. That's very tempting, but I feel, we might, I, I feel like we're going to need some of these, right? Uh, you might do, yeah. So some of those would be useful for, say, uh, upgrading your staff of air. They also might be useful for other things we need to we need to craft later in the game. But at the same yeah. time, gaining experience in magic is super important. Um, I'm going to hang since... on to mine. Oh, oh yeah, so especially since what? Oh, I was going to say, especially since like that's something you've already started to level up in, and it's good right. for us to generally like get a mixture of have high a good high things. skills. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, yeah. I'll ditch the plants then to go at least get one experience. Sure. So let's get rid of those herbs. All right, and I think that ends my turn. Okay, so that comes back to brings it back to me. So I'm going to go to Lumbridge, uh, and I'm going to try my cook's assistant side quest. So let's bring that side quest card over here. So uh, because I have all these ingredients, the flour, the eggs, and the fruits, I'm going to take a cooking test, um, and I need to roll a four. Uh, I'm only going to get one die, however, because my cooking skill is not quite high enough to get more dice, because I'm only cooking skill two, and it's complexity three. So we'll roll the die and hope we get a four. We don't. We get a three, so we fail it this time around. So I burnt some of the materials, uh, oh, no. the resources rather. So I'm going to get rid of the eggs because they're pretty close by. I need to go and get some more. You burnt the eggs? I did. I burnt the eggs. Oh, um, that very easily. Your feet might be too now. high. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. Uh, so, um, but I did get an experience point in cooking. Um, so that's my turn done because I failed the test. And that is back to. Ooh, back Remember to, to butter the pan a little bit too. Mm -hmm, It'll, mm -hmm. It won't stick. Yeah. yeah, that helps. Oil, butter, whatever you got. It's very, it's very realistic. I'm not a great cook. <laughs> uh, also, pro tip from Jamie if everyone can roll on the map, it's super easy for me to find your dice for, for chat to oh, see. Oh, will do. All right. Oh, gosh. I had all these lofty goals of speaking to the doctor, and, and now I'm aimless. I feel like just an exploration wouldn't hurt. <gasps> but I can upgrade melee where I am. That means can, I can't yeah. move, though. It's true. We are going to have Richard's turn first, though. I am all in on the adventures you're, you're of Simix. Very well set up. Right. The yeah. quest a lot. I get Not so Simix excited. a lot. Maybe they're related. Um, but I am definitely, I like you know, I've, I've got a witch's quest and I cannot lie. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a witch's potion to brew. So if I'm in Port Sarum, which I am now, I can perform the following action: I sample the witch's potion. It's a complexity two um, defense test. I'm, it's, I get to roll uh, with my equipment, so I get extra dice, and I've got two in defense. You do. So you're going to get two oh, uh, dice normally, and you're going to get the, equi the equipment die as well. And Jamie has 
kindly put all the dice together for me. You're welcome. He knows I'm very bad with this app. <gasps> Good die roll. Well, well, and I got it. Brilliant. So I now get some lovely gold. I get four gold and three defense XP, which takes me up a level. So that's really... Yep. Don't forget good. the one extra experience for taking the test as well. So it's four total. Indeed. Okay, so I'll grab your gold for you. Four gold pieces. Thank you, my dear. Uh, and you've completed your side quest. Well done. I have indeed completed that side quest. Okay. So, uh, Sir Questor, what say you? Ah, I say that I am now headed towards Black Knight's Fortress, where I'll do a thieving test to, to take care of this wanted side quest. Hmm. So let's go towards there. Oh gosh, that requires a uh, fast travel yet again. Mm -hmm. It's okay, you got plenty of gold though, so I think you'll be okay. Yeah, but then I'm going to escalate the situation. Yep. In fact, you know what? I missed it again in my turn. I already should have done it on my turn. So I'll tell you what. We're just going to pause you for a second while you think about that. Okay. Uh, and I can show you what kind of happens, actually. So I should have moved the escalation track on my turn. We'll flip over this next campaign card. Um, Richard, can you give me a read of this whilst I sort out what it's going to do for us? Of course I can. Screams can be heard far beyond the borders of Draenor Village as the bloodthirsty Count Draenor extends his rampage. So, uh, Jamie's going to be placing danger tokens in the Wizard's Tower, the farmland, and the Barbarian Village. Oh, Count wow. Draenor is Go. nearly Go. getting out of hand now. Uh, collect Vault Card 39 and shuffle it into the Falador Exploration Deck for a whole different kingdom. Then collect Vault Card 24 and place it on top. Then collect Vault Card 40 and shuffle it into the Baroque Exploration Deck Collect Vault Card 25 and place it on top. He's really getting out of hand. He's, 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 he needs dealing with... I'm at the card. Wizard's Tower. I can hear the screams. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, at least one of them is you. <laughs> That's <laughs> very sure. true. Your wounds are fresh. Okay, so now we have plenty more uh, danger tokens all over the game board. Um, so that means that our, our skill test in those locations is going to be much more difficult. Um, luckily, you just would, you were taking you were doing exploration in the Wizard's Tower before this came down on you, Jake. So uh, you get to kind of watch all this happen as a spectator, as you said. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry, I'll stop interrupting your turn, Becca. I promise. Uh, it is you can now do your turn. <laughs> no, no, no. You are buying me time. So um, I also seem to be the best person to acquire this stake from the the Evergreen Tree because yeah. a recommended yep. skill of three. But you know what? I'm just getting greedy with stuff over here. Uh, and I kind of want to just explore where I am. Okay. No, no, no. We're going to fast travel to Sir Thorpe. Berthorpe? Berthorpe. That's it. Berthorpe. Berthorpe. Okay. Okay. We'll pay one t for our fast traveling. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm here... Uh, really, I'm interested in getting to Taverly next turn, but I'll, I'll um, let's see, my options are, can I both explore here and do uh, pay for level a up. melee level yeah. up? Yep, that's oh. how that works. So ah, so you can, uh, you can pay gold, one gold for a melee, one gold for thieving, only uh, once each. And if you want to, you can pay two gold for magic as well. But all of that is optional. I'm going to pay two gold for one melee and one thieving. Sounds good. Uh, and then because you explored Berthop, you also get to take some stone as well, because that's the resource that's in Berthop. Okay, Great I went up one. one in melee uh, um, level, because I already had two XP, and I'll just put one XP down for thieving. That's it. Uh, we'll also move the escalation track up by one as well. Oh, that's uh, fine. Why did we move the escalation? Uh, whenever you move into a capital. So I've been forgetting oh, it the last couple no. of turns. So I'm just okay. trying to take from the top of that now. <laughs> um, well, I think that makes it my turn, right? Yeah. Uh, it does. Well, I'm actually going to have a really similar turn because I need to get out of Danger Town, which is where I've been every single turn this game. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm actually going to go fast travel to the same place, as a matter of fact. Uh, Berthorpe. Berthorpe? Okay. Um, Beth and, great. And I'll spend one gold to do so. And I will also, uh, do I explore first or do I? Uh, uh, so yeah, you, you, ex you, ex 
uh, you explore first level, spending your gold to get experience is part of exploring the capital. Got it, got it. Um, well, I'll definitely level up first. I'm also going to take a thieving XP, just one, because that's actually going to get me, because re- that'll be my third, which will get me a level up into thievery. Mm-hmm. Right, level two. And then um, I'm not going to bother with melee, so maybe I'll actually spend three more gold. Ooh, can I do this? So you can... So you Is can, there a maximum? Each, yeah, the, you can do each of the skill points once. So you could do... Uh, you could do you could spend two gold for an um, experience point in magic if you want to. You oh, I can do each, each of them once. Correct, correct. I will 100% spend uh, two gold to get a magic XP. That's it. Great. Uh, and then and you then, also... You also get some stone. Oh, yes. Excellent. That gets me closer to upgrading my staff. And I'm the only one that can upgrade my staff, right? No one else could upgrade it for me. <laughs> yeah, they can. Yeah. So if you, they, they actually can. Yeah. So if, uh, so really? if you're okay. stood in the same, if you're stood in the same region as someone else with a higher crafting skill, uh, or, you know, because you're in a capital now, you could drop it into the clan bank and all the resources along with it if you want to. Um, someone else could upgrade it and pass it back to you. What if Becca <laughs> takes it from me and then logs out? Like uh, then. Year? <laughs> then that's it's gonna get her account banned. Oh, okay, um, okay, cool. Oh, yeah, I'll report yeah. her. Okay, cool. there is a report system coming in the expansions, I assume. Great. Uh yeah. let's explore here. Okay. Uh so and uh you've Gold. also moved the escalation track up by one. There we go. Uh sorry, you don't draw as I said before, you don't draw an right, escalation. Right, because I'm in the city, right, right, right. For the capitals. Yeah. So that's uh I've explained that yet on the stream. It's um none of the capitals are necessarily safer, but there are more sort of consistent areas of the universe in RuneScape. Um so because you kind of know the different places you're gonna go and see the different shops or the skilling points, say in a forge or a, you know, a thieving guild or rogues gallery or something like that. Uh and then also um, you know, there, it's a walled city with guards, you're not as easily gonna get randomly jumped on by different NPCs and um and people out in the wild. Excellent. Okay. So that's going to end your turn um, because there's nothing else for you to do there, I think. And then that's going to bring it back around to me. What am I doing? So I'm going to go back to, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to go back to the farmland. I want some more eggs. Um, I'm not done with the cook system quest yet. I am. I am. Uh, And I am going to draw a card from Varric. And I am also going to write to Count Draenor. Uh, Count Draenor stalks the night. This is uh, not the time for a confrontation. That's correct. Use your surroundings to mislead the vampire. That is a... Gathering three test. I am not good at gathering, and even if oh, I no. was, there's a danger token here. So, oh no, it's a gathering test and just try to hard roll it on one die. Need a seven, but hey! you did it. <laughs> okay, uh, so I will take an experience point in gathering, uh, and then whew, yeah, wow, big sigh of relief. Uh, and then I'm gonna get probably the hardest four, four eggs I have ever seen, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and that is the end of my turn. Richard. Well, um, I don't think you deserved that. I think, you know, this egg thievery should have been punished, and I'm very unhappy with that. Okay. I'm going to move to Falador. Uh, I am going to uh, spend some gold to level up my crafting mm-hmm. so that next turn I can go and start work on our vampire killing hammer. So that goes down there, and then I'm up to three. Um, what do I get for two in Falador? Uh, you can have cooking or gathering. Uh, well, let's and I will. I will put an extra in gathering as well. So that's three gold spent, and then I'll have my. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what the resource is, but I will have that as well. Thread, and then I'll move the escalation track up by one because you've stayed in the capital for your turn. You basically, yes. when you end if your I, turn in a capital. Now I'm at three in crafting. If uh, if Mister Normal wants to drop <laughs> his staff and various items in there, I could craft it. I could take it from the clan bank, craft it, and then drop it back in the clan bank. 100%. Can I do that out of turn? Uh, I don't know. Jamie? Uh, you can... Sorry, the question again was to take stuff out of the clan bank and then craft it the same turn. Yeah, you can do all of that. As long as you're exploring the region, you can do all that once. Uh, but I, I didn't do it prior on my turn. I didn't declare that I was going to put it in there in the first place. Can I have done that retroactively out of turn? Sure, yeah. sure. Uh, let's let's. Well, n- not normally. But not normally, can, but I think for the sake of yeah. can game, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So, uh, do you want me to add materials to it that it needs? Because I have like seventy five percent of what the upgrade needs. Well, yeah, yeah. Whack it in there. What are you missing? I'm just missing one uh, wood. Uh, I don't have any wood. I'm sure we can get some. <laughs> I have right. wood. I'm throwing wow. my staff in the bank. 
So we'll just drop all that into the clan bank down here. How much red yeah, are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I planned ahead, and I did this on my last turn. I forgot to yeah. tell you all, but I knew that I'd left. That's true, you did. I would at, 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 at this umbridge, bumbridge, bum, bum, birthorp. <laughs> Mr. Normal saw into the future, and there were 400 million permutations, and this is the one where the staff could get done. So we're fine. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. So I will do that. So if I'm equal, I roll two. That's, yeah. Okay. Correct. And I need a six. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, we don't have any spares, so we might have to. Just don't, just don't <gasps> fail it. There you go. You got it. Now oh. roll a crit. Ooh, nice. Okay, Full so, we, so we've now got a new posh staff. We do indeed, which is called an air battle staff. So we've upgraded the staff there to an air battle staff. Whoa, okay. Oh, much uh, cooler. So I, will, I will immediately drop that straight back into the bank. So on your next turn, you can um, nice. you can pick that up. Was there anything else you're doing with your turn, Richard, or is that you? Um, I've got. I've, I need to get my thread, but other than that, that is my turn. Cool. And you get an experience point for taking the crafting test as well. Oh, indeed. How delightful. Okay, then we come back to Sir Questalot. <gasps> that is I. All right. Um, I definitely remember what I was trying to do, which was to go get that stake for everybody. So mm -hmm. I shall move to Taverly. Yep. And while I'm here, I shall take the quest action to get a branch from the ancient evergreen at the foot of White Wolf Mountain. Okay, so you've spoken to Evergreen the Tree, and here is Evergreen the Tree's NPC card. We now have a talk to Evergreen. All right. My branches. As you approach the ancient tree, ready to hack off a branch, its bark slowly shifts, revealing a knot resembling the face of an elderly man. Oh, elderly man. Okay. Back. Slowly booms a commanding voice. The days that I would allow foolhardy adventurers to part one of my limbs are gone. Find another way to slay whatever vampire needs killing. It seems you have a fight on your hands to get a branch. Mmm. The old sentient tree problem. Uh-huh. Collect vault cards six and seven and place them on the mini boss board. Evergreen starts the fight with five HP. When Evergreen is defeated, collect vault cards eight and we'll, we'll get to that. We will. Okay, so we've started off our first mini boss fight, which is against Evergreen the Tree, because he's reluctant to give you his branches uh, to form a stake with. So we're going to take you off the main game board now, and you're going to get ported into a mini boss instance, which is just over here. Um, so this is something that we can do as a team together. The more of us that are in this mini boss instance, the the better our chances are of, of passing rolls, etc. Because there's uh, some fight bonuses we get. So uh, if there's two of us in there, we get plus one to all of our skills. Three of us in there, all the dice rolls are easier. That kind of thing. More of us, the better. Um, but you can fight the tree on your own if you uh, want to. So you've got two options. You can either you can either try to survive a needle spray, um, which is taking a defense test. If you survive the needle spray, you're going to get to pile up some tokens on a branch lash. Um, branch lash is the behavior that where you can actually try to damage the tree. But the more tokens you stacked upon it from needle spray, the easier it is to do damage through branch lash. Um, but you could just go straight for a branch lash if you want to. I see. Okay, so. It's an RS token on this card. Interesting. Reduce complexity. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and this would be one turn each. And people can come join if they come to Taverly on yep. their turn. That's it. That's true. Okay. So the smart thing to do is to do one needle spray at least to get the RS token. Uh, but I'm not a smart person. So <laughs> my defense is only one and my... Melee is oh I did get up to four so yeah, yeah you did in. so I am a smart person I take it back <laughs> and I'm gonna go straight for the branch lash yeah okay so you can roll two dice uh, at the branch lash uh, your bronze longsword isn't quite good enough to help you out in this fight because the complexity is too high but your skill is high enough to give you two dice at least dang okay well I'm bummed you got about this. my I thought about leveling up my bronze longsword but we didn't so it's too late now okay still thirty percent mm -hmm. on each die you got it here we go roll. Oh, oh, one and a five, it does not equal an eight. No, mm -mm. it does not. So no. you suffer a wound. Um, there you go, onto your character like that. So that would, so your turns now are going to be, each time you come around to a turn, you're going to pick one of those two behavior cards to, to fight each turn. But that's okay. going to be the same for any character that joins you as well. Excellent. And um, I don't increase my melee when I fail a test, do I? 
No, so that's the different thing about fighting bosses. That's the only time you take skill tests uh, where you don't gain experience is when you're fighting bosses and mini bosses. And that's because it basically slows down the fight too much. If there's a couple of us in there, we should just be going, here's the behavior card I roll, roll through it and go straight to it so we can speed up the encounter. Um, However, once you've defeated a mini boss, a main boss, you get a boatload of experience at the end of it. Uh, Not that she's going to leave, but can she or is she stuck in there fighting? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So if you get to a point where you're worried you're about to die, when you start your turn, you can just move off and go somewhere else. You can just back flip away. Okay. You can come back to the mid. I mean, it's, it's a tree. It's not as if it's going anywhere. Sure. Uh, sure. So <laughs> Very fair point. This is what I get for Sir Side Quest doing a main quest. Thing is, Sir Side Quest, if you can hang on in there, my character can come in and has pretty good defense, which means we can start piling up tokens on needle spray, and then it makes your melee tests much more effective. So... Hang in there. Help is on its way. Excellent. Nice. Love to hear it. Okay. In the meantime, though, I think we go around to Jake's turn. What would yeah. You like to do, Jake? Um, I'm going to go to the Goblin Village and talk okay. to the fellas there because I have that Goblin Diplomacy side quest. You do. Um, so this would be a quest action if I want to do it, right? It would be a quest action indeed, right. yes. Let's bring that so card over. If, if I'm in the Goblin Village, I can perform a steal of their old clothes and present them back to the generals as an alternate option because they're fighting over what color. Um, so I... Uh, it's a one skill check, and I have two, so I got to roll three dice. That's it. Yep. Uh, if you can up. roll a five or more, then you pass the test. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. That's a 60% on each. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, barely. There you go. Nailed it. I barely convinced them, but it worked. They goblins agree that brown is best. The quest <laughs> is complete. I gained five thieving experience and two gold. Oh, damn. Nice. Uh, plus the thieving experience for taking the test. So six in total. Oh, okay. So I just straight up level it to four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy moly. Two level awesome. ups. Yep. So Mr. these side quests, normal. even though they don't like, in an individually completing side quest doesn't actually help you directly with your overall main quest to your campaigns, but they give you a whole lot of experience and skills, et cetera, and resources to help you along your way. Yeah, they you. make life worth living. I agree. Yep. <laughs> All right, I'll just throw that over in the discard there, and then we can acquire yep. a new side quest later. I think that's my turn, because I don't gain a option to level my melee when I do a uh, quest action, right? Correct, correct. Yes, yeah, so explore or, or quest. Okay, so uh, back to me. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, uh, back to language. <laughs> and we're going to try again to do the cook's assistant, and we're going to roll one die again, and this time we're going to pass it, because we're going to roll the four. Nope, no, we're not going to pass it. We're going to oh, no! burn the eggs. I'm gonna burn the eggs Wait, again. What about that chat given reroll? Chat given reroll. Chat gonna give me a reroll. I made think? this up, but they should okay, be that's able fine. to. Yeah, that's okay. We'll use the power of the chat. Have a reroll <gasps> of that, and then get a three. <laughs> okay, this <laughs> okay, is your great. destiny to just burn the eggs. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Not a problem. <laughs> okay, uh, that's fine. We burn the eggs. Okay, so uh, so we get another experience in cr- in cooking, and we'll go. We're gonna get there eventually because eventually we'll become skill three in cooking. You're okay, not going to make it to Bake Off. At this point, that is true. That is true. I'm not going to be on Bake Off. I will. No. I will have to. I'll have to deal with that. Uh, that's the end of my turn. Back to Richard. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to come and help uh, sequester a lot. So I'm moving yep. to Tavoli, and you then do. I vanish into side boss, mini boss. <laughs> Okay, because that, there are that, two of that you. That was the original Star Trek transport. Um, transport <laughs> well fact. So, uh, because there are two of you in the fight now, uh, you get a fight bonus of plus one to all of your skill levels. Oh. Um, so, um, so that's actually so, going to make your 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 defense and your melee test a little bit easier. Yeah, needle needle spray. Yep. So, so you count got, you count as defense four. Well, I've, I mean, I already defense three, so I'm mm-hmm. already one above it. So I'm already rolling three dice. Mm-hmm. And I've got my awesome new armor, which means I get to roll the four. That's it. So I'm rolling all four dice. Yep. That's it. So I get to put a runescape token on the card. Which I've, I've just done that for you. Thank you very much. And that should make things a bit easier for Sir Haxalot when okay, he starts so... laying into the branches. So, uh, yeah, so we come back to uh, Becca's turn. Uh, what would you like to do? So that's that RS taken has just made that branch slash behavior a little bit easier now. So that's now complexity three and you need sevens, but or you could go for another needle spray because now your defense two because Richard's helping you out. <gasps> Thank you. Okay, so let me work this out a little bit. And I think we put the token on the needle spray card. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I've been doing so... that run the whole time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I rarely do I read the card, but occasionally. <laughs> 
So now I do have the defense to get full dice on needle spray, but I also get two dice for branch lash and reduce the complexity so it would only be three. So I'm gonna get an extra die for branch lash because of the extra token on needle spray. So yeah, I'm gonna branch lash. Okay. So yeah, that'll give you three of the gray dice to roll that and you need to roll seven. Here we go. Let's get this orange out of here. We're gonna roll all sevens. Ready? Mm-hmm. <gasps> we got a 10. Hey, you did. nice. So you cause one wound to the evergreen tree, and that takes the Aris token off Neil's spray. Inflict a wound for each success and remove a token. Oh, this takes a while. <laughs> yeah, so it's probably it's probably better to build up multiple tokens on Branch Lash. So you get to a point where there's like three or four tokens, and it's really low complexity, because then you'll get your bronze longsword helping you out as well. Okay, mm. and inflict um, a wound for each success. I see. So I could have gotten multiple it. damage in. Correct. Correct. That's good. Okay. Right, too late so, to retcon. <clears throat> okay, got it. No problem. Okay, so back to, <laughs> we go back to Jake. Yes. Um. Hmm. Uh. Well, I can go grab more ingredients to bring to the guild bank. <laughs> I'm not sure what else to do. I mean, we could also. I guess we could go try and grab the hammer. I just don't have a lot of skills appropriate here, so I think I get stuff for the garlic is what I should do. All right, I'm going to Ice Mountain, the home of the garlic festivals, and I'm going to explore there. Yeah, I would appreciate some help with the cooking because apparently I'm terrible at it. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. We noticed. I am also not great at it, but in real life, I can cook some eggs. Uh, it's Edgeville. We're at Ice Mountain where an ice fiend charges towards you. Stand your ground or scare it off with magic. Oh, that can be done. Uh, I First off, before I left, by the way, I grabbed my staff of air. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. of course. And um, then we're in Ice Mountain. So we get a garlic red or a uh, cooking, right? What is this? So, um, oh, it's the skill. It's the skill. skill yeah. So, so this, right. this is where you would be spending resources uh, to level that up. But you, I think you spent all your resources to I get did, your stuff. I did. I yeah. did. Okay, great. Okay. So I won't, but we have to still deal with the old uh, Ice Fiend. I can, with my staff, it has for, for complexity four or below, which is mm -hmm. what this is. I yep. can use an additional die. So I have four dice to roll. So your magic skill level is two, I think, at the moment. So you're nearly at three. Um, oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, I am at three. Yeah. So you I'm get so used to my the... thievery being so high. So yeah, so yeah. I'll just, just roll two dice. That's it. The All right. one of the equipment. Not there. nearly as awesome as I wanted to be. Here we go. Rolling. Still looking for four. And yet you're uh, yeah, I think uh, I think you're spending too much time with me watching rolling dice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but I get I get to I'll explore a mechanic we haven't explored yet in this game, which is death. Uh oh, you died. Yes. I did, yes. yes. Did. I came okay. into this battle with a good wound, and oh, then an ice no. fiend threw me off the mountain. That's it. Yikes. That's true. Okay. So the escalation track rises by one because you died. Um, and then what we need to do is go and draw. Uh, vault card 27 because death is going to want to have a word with you gulp okay right so um we don't have a lot of text for death because he's just not happy to see you but he does say death uh, convince death to give you your stuff back because uh <laughs> what what he's effectively done is because he's displeased you for wasting his time uh he sent you back to the runescape universe uh, where you're going to respawn in one of the capital regions so it's i think it's the closest capital region you are closest to so that's edgeville okay that's where you're going to respawn and then you roll a d10 to see how much how much health you get back oh okay uh, and it's a seven or more. You get all three of it. Yep. So yeah. All of your health back. There's uh, my numbers. But because of his displeasure with you, he has stolen your air battle stuff. Ah, if you just want that back, it. if you want that back, you're gonna have to go and steal it from death. Um, okay. So you have also got uh, a death tally because you've died once. That's gonna be important, basically, for when you try and steal your your uh, your staff back. And you also need to roll another d10 to find out where in the RuneScape universe uh, death has gone to with your staff. Okay, I can do. He so went eight. eight. So he's gone to White Wolf Mountain. So he has gone to here. So any of the uh, adventurers that go to White Wolf Mountain can interact with death and try to steal your staff back, or you can do it yourself. Um, okay. Okay. So uh, that also ends your turn, though, because you died. Um, yes, I would have said so. so. <laughs> comes back around to me. Do we happen to have any eggs in the clan bank? No, no, we don't. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to. I mean, at this, I mean, so really, this. maybe cut your losses. <laughs> just we yell from the living room into the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, do I have any goal? It. It's not with no, is it? Okay, right. So what we're gonna do instead is we're going to spend a 
gold piece, we're going to go to Berthorp. Um, and whoops, uh, and then what we're going to do is explore Berthorp to get some stone, which means next turn I'm going to come and join you in the uh, Evergreen fight. Excellent. Okay. It's Before nice it, 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 I've heard. Uh, before that happens, uh, the escalation track's going to go up to the top again, <gasps> which means it's going to reset, and we're going to see our next oh, campaign no, card. Oh, no. So Richard, would you like to give us that a read for us, please? A chance to show off? I couldn't possibly. <laughs> All blood will flow. Not satisfied with merely the inhabitants of the surrounding area for its victims, Count Drenor now extends his bloodlust further afield. Collect Vault Card 41 and place it on top of the Berthorpe Exploration Deck. Collect Vault Card 42 and place it on top of the Edgeville Exploration Deck. Things are getting dire. They are indeed. Okay, and that uh, ends my turn, so we come back to Richard. Uh, well, I'm uh, I'm just going to do uh, Needle Spray again, so I'll be rolling yep. uh, a lot of dice. You will. I'm missing. Where's the other one gone? Where did it go? Yeah, spirit. where did that other one go? I was looking for there you that. Go. It's on the campaign board. Ah, thank you. Let's have a look. Ooh. Ooh. Yep. There you go. So nice we get a nice little token on there. Well we done. And thanks to Becca, I know which card it goes on this time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, speaking of which, that then becomes Becca's turn. Well, I'm, I'm going to eat my vegetables, and I too will do a needle spray test. Mm hmm. So I'm going to get to roll two dice because Richard is helping me out in this fight. Correct. And nothing else benefits my defense. So here we go. Yep. A uh, got it. Nice. Nailed it. Okay, so that's another token onto the Neil Spray card. Okay, that's the end of your turn, which brings it back around to Jake. Uh, I have a question. I think I missed something. I think I was supposed to give myself an XP in my magic for when I failed... You were, uh, yes, the ice that's... fiend. So I'm going to give myself a third, which brings me up to three magic this time. That's true. All right, feeling good about that. Um, I mean, I kind of want to go get my staff back from death. Yeah, that really kind of irked me personally. Um, so I, that would I would imagine that means I have to travel over to so fast so, travel. Yeah, that's probably gonna be the best way again. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's do it. I'll fast travel. I'll spend a coin. And um, let's see, should I level up something in the city while I'm here? I suppose I should take another magic because we want me to be good at that and probably, and uh, and a thievery. So I'll take all three of my gold, spend it all and get XP on both of those. Okay. Uh, I guess unfortunately, oh, at stones. White Wolf Mountain, they do have a theme park as well. Oh, it just sounds like they should, right? It, de it, it definitely does sound like that. While I'm in uh, the city, do you want me to drop the stone I just acquired into the guild bank for anybody? Because I don't really need it right now. Drop a stone. Okay, so, yeah. All right. Uh, with that, I'll end my turn. Okay. Um, and we put the escalation track up by one because you went to a capital. Yes. Thank you. Which brings it back to me. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step into Tavoli. Yeah. Uh, and then jump into this mini boss fight as well. Okay. So my defense is only one, but because there's three of us in there. Uh, I get plus one to my skill level, so it becomes defense two. Uh, and we have minus one to our TN now, which basically means that the number that we have to roll is one less as well. So I'm going to get to roll two dice. And instead of trying to roll a six, I'm going to have to try and roll a five. So I yeah. succeed. Wow. Get us a third token nice. on Needle Spray. And that ends my turn, brings it back around to Richard. Okay, well, I'm just going to do exactly the same thing again. Yep. And then yep. hopefully that will set up sequests a lot in the next turn to really do some damage. Yep. Oh. I mean, I passed, passed it. but for the sake of it. So we now have four tokens on Needle's Wow. Brain. So that's going to make the Branch Lash complexity zero, and you need to roll a three on each die. So there's a good chance <laughs> you could one-shot this. Um, that's great. Uh, no pressure. Okay, so <laughs> just roll a, a three or above on every die, because I'm going for the huh? Branch Lash. Easy. Yep, and you get to roll all four of them, because you've got your Bronze Lone Sword helping you this time as well. Okay, easy. Oh, oh wow! Epic <laughs> fail. <laughs> well, the the it's tokens okay. still remain though, right? You only get one taken off if you for each hit. So inflict a wound on Evergreen for each success and remove each each RS token from the Neil's Break card. No, they all come off. Oh no! Oh. I misread that. Wait, oh, hold on. Uh, I did in the meantime, since I last mentioned a reroll in chat, actually put that option. By spending channel points, so like it's chat's, sure. it's chat's game. Ooh, sure. oh boy! But we have to wait for Give the lag. 
to see it. It only applies to co-ops, right? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. Uh, Well, um, the moment is about to pass. At least you succeeded at getting lashed, says Nightcat. Uh, (laughs) Nope, discussion is mostly about lunch. Okay. Um, Here we go. All right. Well, here we go. It's Mr. Normal's turn again. Uh, While you guys are fighting this tree, I've just been dying and trying to get my stuff back. So I'm gonna run over to White Wolf Mountain, and okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can steal my stuff from Death. I'm also interested to see what this Death mechanic well, is. Here. So the complexity it's a thieving test because you've got to steal your stuff back. The complexity of the test against Death uh, is equal to the amount of times you've died. You died once. Nice. Um, so your thieving skill is higher than one, so you're gonna get to roll three dice at it. Um, yeah. And if you get an eight, then you've stolen back. An eight. Your, uh, oh stuff. man. And if yeah. I fail. Uh, if you fail, he's going to teleport to another location on the game oh, board. Okay, uh, which might be the same place, but he's going to go somewhere else. I can I can live with that. All right, here we go. We're rolling. Give me my staff back. Eight or more. Yeah, we got a ten. You got it. Nice. Well, there's, your, there's your battle stuff. Uh, I'll take that. Death is now bored of the situation. He now leaves the RuneScape universe for the time being until someone else has died and he decides to return. Okay. Okay, so when you interact with death, that's in addition to whether you want to explore or do a quest action. So you can still do your turn as normal. Oh, uh, no. awesome. Ooh. I'll explore. Uh, bringing out this uh, card here. And on, oh, it's a general region card. People flee to the mines to escape Count Draenor, leaving only you alone in the night. Run or hide. Oh, good options. Thanks, game. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't. So I, it's a defensive or thievery role. Well, that's good. I'm mm-hmm. actually got good at hiding after learning how bad I was at it against Count Draenor. So three dice. I have four, so I get to roll three dice, right? That's it. Yep, you got it. And target number is six. Mm-hmm. Nine. We got it. I have hid successfully in the mines. So it awesome. says you gain an additional experience point in the skill tested. So you're going to get two total for thieving. Which brings me up to another level up, therefore giving me five thieving. I think I'm going to retire from wizardry and just become a rogue. It's crazy. We now have two rerolls stacked up uh, for however we choose to use them. Okay. Look, it's good to know. That's the benefit of live streaming a game. You get to cheat and it's required. I love that. Works for me. Works for me. Okay, Okay. so that comes back to me then. So I'm going to take a needle spray roll. Uh, so I need to roll a five on one of these two dice, which I do. So we stack our first token back on your spray. Richard. I'm going to do the same, but just with a hell of a lot more dice. There you go. And then yep, back to stack that token. Well, you know, uh, I can't roll poorly again, can I? Yeah, it depends on how much you tempt fate, really. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Just wondering if I happen to have enough stuff to upgrade, but I don't think I could do that here anyways. Uh, my my equipment. Yeah, I don't think, you, yeah, you can't do that in a mini boss fight. You could step outside of it, upgrade it. You'd be like, guys, wait, just hold wait on, a Hold on, wait a minute. Get this with you <laughs> on the sidelines of the fight. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I can't let them down, and I'm going to branch lash yet again. So that reduces complexity by two, yep. making it a complexity of two. Yep. And that means that my. Uh, that we're going to get all four dice. Yes? Correct, and you only need to roll fives because there's two tokens and there's three of us in the fight. And I'm going to roll all fives and above. Watch this. There you go. That's oh, you got two. Oh. two one, two. He's on one health. Oh, we're really close. Oh, come on. Really close. Okay, I'm removing the the tokens. Unless you want to use your reroll now, Becca. Do we mm. dare? Ooh, I like it because it's risky. Because we could yeah. get less. Yeah, How about we, we use could get one? less. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'm, re- oh, I'm using the reroll. Oh, boy. <gasps> yeah! Uh. Three tens. <laughs> there we go. That's why we do this. And thanks so much for... Uh, we'll use fatal pierces for no reason whatsoever. There we go. Okay, so um, back to the My Branches card. Whenever Green is defeated, collect a Vault card 8, and each adventurer in the fight gains 3 experience in either Defense or Melee. Ah. Okay. Oh, I am so, s- so I'm going to get a whole level in Defense, because I am terrible at Defense so far. I am going to get a whole level in Defense, just because I want to be basically unkillable. That's fair. Okay, uh, and then Becca, what did you want to get a level in? I'll go with Defense as well. Because uh, I'm already at four melee. Come on. 
Good choice. Okay, and because you are the one that dealt the killing both the tree, you get to have the stake card. <gasps> so, okay. Thanks, friends. So this is going to be useful for when we fight Count Draenor later in the game. Uh, and we've completed those two steps of the uh, the stake part of the quest. We've spoken to Evergreen, and we have acquired our stake. Sounds like nice. I'm the one who needs the stake hammer as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So uh, you need yeah you need both of them to be able to wield wield them basically. Okay, but I'll I'll go make my my friend go fetch it for me because <laughs> it requires crafting. I just don't have. That is fair. Okay, so uh, all the rest of us get ported back onto the main game board, and that was uh, Becca's turn, wasn't it, to take the tree out? It was. So that makes it Jake's turn. Great. So I, I guess at this point, what we're looking forward to doing is having someone good with cooking and someone who's good at crafting, which I feel like is this you know you two already we've kind of got those i'm pretty yeah. handy at crafting i'm right. on the verge of being good at cooking I'm just <laughs> yeah you, you've been learning through your mistakes <laughs> which i really trial best way to grow error emphasis would, on the error yeah more i would say error also a little trial yeah uh yeah. so i feel like i should gather stuff for us at this point like what's the most beneficial thing for me to do so continue continuing to level uh, level your magic skill is right. always good at it. And defense defense is always generally useful as well. So you've noticed on the cards that we've drawn for Count Draenor so far is that most of them have been getting you to do roll defense rolls as he's been attacking yes. you. Mm -hmm. That is definitely um, I'll say foreshadowing for how the boss fight is going to work. So having okay. high defense is always useful as well. Well, I'm one. I'm one defense, so I definitely need to address that. The place where I'm at will give it to me if I explore, but I don't have any um, items to exchange. So maybe I'll come down and grab some meat where you guys are at, actually, at Taverly, yep. and explore uh, real quick. For sure, that works. Another Because we're all a little bit low on resources and money right now as well. Uh, just exploring places with resources is a good way to get uh, additional... Um, well, resources. Uh, and then also the side quest we've got available here. That's a good way to get hold of more gold. Right. Uh, the side quest over, there was one in Taverly, right? Uh, we have to craft the armor in Taverly. That's it. Yeah, armor for hero. Okay, cool. Well, I'll grab, uh, I'll do an exploration. I'll grab a, a steak. I believe this is a porter house. And at Taverly, <laughs> we'll do an exploration. All right. The lands of Taverly can be bountiful for those to the skill to farm them. Uh -oh. If you're a cook with skill of four and get a four, you gain a coin and an ingredient of your choice. You know, this is going to be so shameful if you beat Jamie at the cooking <laughs> skill. Test. It's, it's going to happen. I've accepted. I've accepted. It's my fate. It's going to happen. Um, I just reach into a tree and pull out an egg. <laughs> yeah, and I'm okay. and I'm like, how? How? <laughs> All right, here we go. We're rolling one single die, four or more. We got a two. Oh. and i'm like say that's how it feels yes I, I get it i burnt that egg somehow uh all right so we'll ditch that but i did get meat so we at least got that i'll throw that in the discard and that's yep. my turn yeah. yep. you still get a, a cooking experience though, oh yes well. i do learning yep. through failure love that okay uh did you want to pick up the armor for hero side quest by the way because you can also just pick that up for being in the region uh sure yeah i guess well i mean then am i the one who has to do it because should we give it to the crafter Oh, that's true. Yeah, it would be that's to complete. Yeah, so yeah I'd rather, better, I'd rather, um, yeah, someone else do that who's got some okay. practice skills. Okay, so it comes around to me, um, because because we're all in the same region now, we can freely trade between us. We don't just have to use the clan bank. So what I'm going to do is say, Richard, you know those eggs you've got there? Do you mind if I burn them? Um, so is that okay I mean, with you? I I just at this point, <laughs> I really think. Um, I mean, I've got the chef's hat. I'd probably roll better than you, but yes, yes, okay. I'll. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> Get burning. Go, go on. Go straight to me. Does anybody? Does anybody need any lumber or stone? Because I've got those spare. I don't really need those. Uh, I'm gonna upgrade my bronze sword, and I think. No, I want the the ingots and leather. Yeah. yeah okay. Um... I've got one leather <gasps> that I can put towards it, and I'm happy to do the crafting roll as well. I feel I'm probably. Oh, so uh, I should yeah, drop one off leather. my long got one leather and one stone in there. So if we can find two iron, then we can craft it. I'm going to drop my long sword and one um, stone into the, 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 the group area. Yep. Okay. Uh, that's fine. So it, it's it's good to have some spare resources as well, because if Richard happens to fail the test like I've been repeatedly doing, then he's going to have to discard <laughs> one of those resources. So it's good to have spares just exactly, in case. Exactly, that's what I was thinking. Okay, so uh, I'm going to drop the um, the stone and the wood that I've got into the clan bank. They're not really for any particular reason so much as I just don't need them. Um, they can go that way. Well, how am I going to get back to Lumbridge then? I have no gold 
right now. I'm not going to take armor for a hero. Because oh, I'll stick a one thing. gold in the bank for you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you very much. We hear the pity in your voice. I wasn't going to ask for it. I mean, you know, I appreciate it. You can't even it afford one gold. You can't. Yeah, it's it's been. <laughs> It's been painful to watch. It has been a little bit, but we're gonna we're about to reward that now because we're gonna take a, a cooking test as we do with the cook assistant, and we're gonna roll a four, and we get it finally. <laughs> just, yes! just on a four. <laughs> okay, so um, okay, so the cook is delighted with the sweet smelling cake. Thank God he didn't see the other two. Uh, you've produced. <laughs> um, collect vault card thirty five and discard all the resources left as above. The quest is complete. So I get six cooking experience overall. So we've gone from skill two to skill four in cooking um and we can what was it card 35 which is my recipe for a sponge cake so um <laughs> i don't know if you trust me to cook more <laughs> well, you're, you're level four now at cooking yes that's true. hey all four. right Incredible. so you can go grab that garlic too really easily that's true that's yeah. true okay so uh so that's what i'm gonna be doing next turn um and I think it was some, I've just missed as well, some gold as well. So I got, I also got one gold as well for completing the cook system. Uh, and that, after moving the escalation track up by one, is my turn. Back to Richard. Okay, so I'm going to concentrate on getting the hammer. So my first, so I'm basically, I'm going to go to Falador because that's mm -hmm. the quicker, because I need to be in Port Sarum to do that. So mm -hmm. I will go there. I've got one gold, so I will put... Uh, I will spend that on a crafting XP. Yep. Nice. Uh, to just continue moving that along. Uh, and I get, what, some thread? But I'll just whack that straight into the uh, straight into the, the group pool, into the into the clan bank. Yep. And that's my turn. Okay, and you've also put the space tracker by one. That goes back to yep. Becca. Okay, I got a plan. I'm going to, if I have a coin to do it, yes I do, I'm going to spend one of my two coins to fast travel over onto Edgeville. That's going to move up the tracker. I'll you got take it. a, what are we calling these stone ingots? Metal. Metal. And I shall put it in the group <laughs> kitty because I'm hoping someone who's good at crafting will level up my bronze sword for me and that's needed there. <laughs> Nice. Uh, that's only one okay. of two, but we'll see what we can do. I believe you can go three for one on the resources, right? Uh, sh sure. What? Sorry, what? I, I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking to confirm something you made up? <laughs> I thought we could do a three for one trade on something. <laughs> But so there is a, so that you're actually quite close to the grand exchange there. So the grand exchange that's in the video games, that's literally the open market. People buy and sell all the different things they craft oh. in the game. So the way we represent that is you can uh, increase the escalation track by one to use the grand exchange. You can either buy an item card for four gold, which is just one of these item cards up here. You would draw a couple of those and pick the one you want, or you can exchange resources. So you can exchange any one resource for any other resource, like as many times as you want. Um, you can buy any resource in the game for two gold, or you can sell any resource in the game for one gold. I but why do that when you can just make up rules? I prefer uh, my way. While I'm here, I could spin some of my few coins, but I think I'm just going to hold tight because my dream is to go to Black Knight's Fortress next turn and finish my side quest. So I'll pass my turn. Uh, that goes to Jake. Great. I have a question about when I explore in a place that has a skill level up, can I exchange as many items for experience as I want or uh, just a limit of one? It's up to three and they have to be different. Ooh. Good it can twist. Be, it, it can be any of them. Good twist. Hmm. Well, I lack money, <laughs> and I lack re different resources, so I can't go level up my defense, which is what I really wanted to do. So I think we'll. Hmm. Well, I think we'll just do it anyway, and we'll go. Oh, that's not a good efficient use of a turn, though. I guess we'll do it anyway. We'll go to White Wolf Mountain. We will do an explore. We'll exchange our meat for a defense skill. I'll just hand mm -hmm. somebody some meat and they'll teach me how to dodge. Blink. Well, you, you throw it out there and attract a wolf, which causes you to, and then, to fight and, train. and then Yeah, yeah. fight him. Uh, all right, and then we'll explore using the White Wolf card here. And at White Wolf Mountain, emerging 
from the shifting snow. An elemental ice warrior bears down at you. ruh -roh. Thankfully, uh, this is a magic skill with only one, which I have four, and I get the battle staff, uh, excuse mm -hmm. me, the air battle staff to help me because this is a lower skill. However, I got to raise a seven, which has um, been elusive for me this game. So we're going to roll all four on the board and get a seven or higher. Yep. Okay, we got it. One of them it. was an eight. Just one. Yeah, noted. Uh, which gains us a coin. A gold coin, and you get an experience point in magic as well. Yes, always the experience points are good. Great, and I think that ends my turn. Okay, so I am going to do the Wreath of Garlic uh, campaign quest. An adventurer with cooking three or more can collect a vault card three. So vault card three is a recipe for the garlic wreath. So the recipe is three vegetables and one thread, so we can tie the garlic wreath together. Uh, and then I'm going to make a cooking test um, to, to actually create the wreath of garlic. Okay, so I've got that card. Uh, effectively taking that card is, um, is my turn. So uh, back to Richard. Okay, well, I'm going to move to Port Sarum and that uh, hammer, as, uh, as Dr. Harlow told us, uh, we need a very specific hammer. So an adventure in Port Sarum with three or more crafting, which I have, can perform the following action. Speak to Thurgo by collecting Vault Card 3. Uh, is it for, Speak to Thurgo, Vault Card 9. There you go. Vault Card 9, rather. Sorry. My apologies. There you go. So you're speaking to Thurgo. After hearing your request, Thurgo rummages through some old dusty shelves until he finds what he's looking for. Been a minute since I looked this one out. I don't have time to craft it myself, mind you. Tell you what, even for a beginner, making this hammer shouldn't be too tough. Uh, take the skim out, find the materials in a decent forge, and be able to put it together yourself. So I now need to collect Vault Card 10. Okay. So Vault Card 10 is the stick hammer schematic. There you go. Okay, Whoa. So Oh dear. Okay. Hammer hey, with that's head. where some of our Pumping. hammer or our metal will come into play. There. Yeah, this um, this is going to use up some of your uh, materials for making that sword, unfortunately. So quests a lot. Two iron, two metal rather, one wood, one leather. Worth so it. How we look? Don't it. you dare. We've got the leather. We've we got we the do have all of that in the clan bank. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> My Becca, long sword. it's about killing drain ore. And in style. <laughs> <laughs> well, just find a lot of a lot of iron, a lot yeah. of metal very quickly, and okay. we'll be fine. I'll work on it. We do uh, have the wood, and we also have a leather, so we're really close. We just need one more. Yeah, we only need one more, one more metal, and we can we can have a go, uh, and I'll get some fruit for that. So that is uh, the end of my go. So I think a good um I think a good plan for the next few turns is probably just to truck every single resource we get into the clan bank because my intention yeah. is to move towards the grand exchange where I can start exchanging all of that for different resources. So we can just literally walk wow. into there and have whatever resources we need, as long as we've got a, a decent bank of resources built up. Love it. That makes so it's a lot okay, of sense. Becca, we'll get we'll get the sword. We'll okay. get the sword. Love it. Uh yeah, and, and I could be generous and go to the Grand Exchange right now, but I won't. I'm going to Black, Black Knight's <laughs> Fortress because I have a Sir Quest a lot quest. Uh, sorry, Sir Side Quest. I am going for Wanted. A cult dedicated to the dark god Zamorak must be infiltrated, for they harbor knowledge of a dangerous wizard. Sir. Amic Vars himself seeks adventurers capable of the task. So, I have accepted the quest. I'm in Black Knight's Fortress. Fortress. Uh, I think that I will use the thieving skill. And I need to roll a five. Because That's I've it. got two, I get two dice. That's it. Okay, two dice and roll a five. Can do. You can do it. We believe in you. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Uh... Oh, nice. <laughs> I like to spam that button, and it worked. We got a 10 and a 5. So, yeah. We got what we need. Place this adventurer on Falador and collect Vault Card 14. Plus, I'm going to get 3 XP in Thieving, 3 XP in Gathering, and 2 coins. So 
Just go up one level in each of those. Take my two coins. I moved you to Thalador too. Thank you. <gasps> Good work. <laughs> Great job, worthy adventurer. This information will serve us well in tracking down the dark wizard. We may call upon you again when the time comes. That's nice. Sir Amic. How amicable of him. Uh, yep. A number of the uh, a number of the NPCs in RuneScape are terrible, terrible puns. So his full name is Ceramic Vaz. Oh goodness. <laughs> I mean, oh, that's boy. solid as far as I'm concerned. It is. It is. All okay. solid material. So I've discarded yep. Wanted, and while I'm here, let me check a, a peep at these side quests. Uh, anything in Falador? Yes, we've got one in Tavoli, one in Varrock, one in Lumbridge, one in Wizard's Tower. So nothing in Falador right now. Dang. Okay, I guess I'll hold tight and think about it. Okay. So, yep, Jake, that's your turn. Yep, time for the old steak harvest to begin. We're going back to Taverly. <laughs> We're exploring, because we need steak. We yep. love it. Um, and the, the thing is the stuff we need, like wood and stuff is all across the world. Is it, do you think it'd be actually, maybe before I do this, do you guys want me to be more helpful and teleport over to one of the other cities and go start gathering stuff for us? I think it's, I think because we're intending to go to the grand exchange, just gathering any resources okay. right now and sticking them in the clan bank is a good idea. Noted. Yep. Okay. Then we're exploring. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. Let's pretend that I had moved one more stone over to that bank when it was my turn. Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah, you the could, you could do that. The Birthorpe Guard are searching for an elusive thief. Since you're from out of town, perhaps offering to help them might discourage any suspicion. I have no choice but to convince the guards. All right, if I fail this, I bump the escalation track. I have only one uh, die in this because it's a nine skill, which is insane. Uh, here we go, rolling on the on the board. It's a three. <laughs> The escalation track gets bumped whether I want it or not, but I still got my ribeye. Um, I think that ends my turn. Yep, it does. And you get an experience point in gathering as well. Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay, so back to me. So I'm going to be starting to make my way up towards the Grand Exchange for now, but I am going to stop along the way at the farmland to get some more eggs because I don't need to burn them anymore, but it's just good to get the resources. So uh, we have found at night, the gates of Varrock closed to protect the people inside from Count Draenor. It's up to you to protect the people left outside the city walls by fending off the vampire. So I can take a melee magic or range test. So I'm going to take a ranged test, I think, of this because I've liked the experience. Um... So it's complexity three. I'm a little bit less than that, but this test is going to get me to level three in range either way. Um, and we'll get to, I don't, my, my bow isn't going to help me out because it's not quite good enough to help me with this test. Uh, I do get a nine though. Well done. So we'll pass it. Get two resources of your choice. That's great. I think we need some metal, don't we? So let's grab some of that. So I've got two metal. Uh, I can get some eggs as well for exploring the farmland. Uh, again, experience points in ranged. So I'm going to go up to level three in ranged. Uh, there we go. Um, and that's the end of my turn. Okay, back to Richard. Okay. Um, hmm. What to do? What to do? So we need any... we need some uh, vegetables. Oh as no, well I can spend. Food. Sorry going to say, I can't sure. spend any gold because I'm out. Otherwise, I could fast travel to get the iron. Yeah, you, you could go to Remington and get some, some vegetables though, because that'd be useful for the garlic wreath as well. I do love the completeness of this game. It's like, you can't neglect the vegetables on your vampire slaying quest. Certainly not. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so, um, so the, the phrase we're, I think I've mentioned this actually, the phrase we're um, using a lot in our blogs and press releases that Jagex quite like actually is how we describe the game. It actually is quite a good phrase for describing the, the tone of RuneScape and old school RuneScape as well is sometimes epic, often irreverent. So that's where that reference <laughs> is coming in there. Like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. We do need to fight this vampire, but first, cake. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Count Dremor stocks the night. And now I need to make one of those defense tests. Complexity three, seven. So I've got the right number and I've got my equipment. So I can roll all three. I uh, roll all four rather. Needing a seven. Otherwise I take two wounds. You got it. Okay. Just. Summer um, you got it. And I've also moved all the dice. That's not what I meant to do. 
Uh, and I'll get some vegetables, which is useful for the garlic. You got a experience points in defense as well. I did indeed, which has taken me. I'm getting pretty solid, pretty good in defense. Okay, I um, think that makes it Becca's turn. Yes, indeed. Well, I love following around this skiller. I think everything he does is pretty awesome. So I am finally going to do a little exploration, get my vegetables in Remington and make a mess of the board. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll take one vegetable and immediately put it in the group pot. And nice. while I'm here, I'll flip a little exploration card. Let's see, that's sure. blue. Got it. Yep. Okay, so we haven't actually seen any random events yet. So the Whoa. random event deck, uh, uh, well, soft exploration cards, they are more geographically linked to what's going to happen in that area. So if you go to Draenor Manor, then something related to Draenor Manor will happen to you, whether it's like a, an evil tree attacking you or a zombie. When it's a random event, that is something that's not geographically linked. It can come from anywhere in the game board or the game world. Uh, and it also can be one of the bigger NPCs you could run into, like the uh, for famous in the video game anyway, the sandwich lady or the evil chicken or somebody <laughs> like that. Um, there's also a character in there called Evil Dave, by the way. Of just course. as a side note. Uh, so the random event you've run into is Hans. Just hands. Oh. Like Duke Horatio's servant wishes to tell you how long you've spent adventuring. Could be useful information. You listen to Hans by adv advancing the escalation track two. If you do gain one XP in a skill of your choice, then collect Vault Card 34 and remove this card from the game. Well, not doing the thing sounds boring, even though I'm going to cause trouble in our escalation track. Again, though, that's the latest problem. We want to see what the shiny thing is, though, right? Yeah, I like shiny <laughs> things, so let's go for it, and I'll take one XP. Okay, so that was Vault Card. Uh, what was that? That was Vault Card 34. Okay, so Vault Card 34, Hans has decided, because he's really glad for you to listen to the stories he's telling you, he's given you a dragon pickaxe. All right, and I've gone um, up to thieving level four because I just needed one more XP there. there you nice. go. So the the dragon pickaxe is a very high level crafting um, and rare crafting use, uh, tool. So that's going to allow you to add an additional die to crafting skill tests, and the equipment die is a, a plus two to all of those crafting skill tests as well. Amazing. Should I leave this in the group, Kitty? Because um, I think that Richard deserves it more than I do. I mean, yeah, I, I hold on to it. Until I quit Crafty Sword as insurance. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, when you do, I got something good for you. Uh, we, you. Can you only put stuff in the guild bank when you're at a major city, or can you put it anywhere? Yeah, it's it's when you're supposed to be when you're at a, a capital. Um, but I was capital, yeah. bending the rules a little bit a couple of times. Ago. And that's totally, yeah, that's fine. Actually, oh, yeah, we don't have the uh, upgrade supplies. Just kidding. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, we're, yeah, go for it. Okay, I was going to say, we're kind of going to be nearing our fight with Draenor pretty soon, I imagine, because we're, mm -hmm. we're close. We, we can get the garlic at any point, because we don't need to be somewhere. We just need to have a cook with three, right? Yep, and I'm on the way to the Grand Exchange to go and get those resources for us. Great, and then over. Um, we have the hammer, which you guys are about to acquire. So I think what I need to do is get my skills up for this fight. So it looks like mm -hmm. magic is one way to fight him. So um, I'm almost level four. I think if I go to White Wolf Mountain and level my defense, which brings it to two, I'll just need one more coin to go to town and level up at Burthorpe my magic so I don't have to go far. So White Wolf first. And we'll explore... Actually, so can you choose to level up first or explore yeah. first? You can do it in either order. That's fine. Hmm. It's probably better to do it now in case this is a defense test and I'll have a two. Makes sense. All right. So we're raising my defense. Oops. Raising my defense to two. Uh, raising my defense to two. <gasps> Sorry. There. I escalated the track twice. Oh, of course you did. Yeah, that's it. So uh, top of the track and then goes up to another one. So would you mind reading the last campaign card out for us, please, Becca? Oh, boy, I'd love to. The longer Count Draenor is allowed to continue his reign of blood and terror, the more innocent victims he claims. After this card has been drawn, each time the escalation track is reset, place a runescape token on this card. When the third token is placed on this card, the adventurers must immediately fight Count Draenor. Uh -oh. At the end of this campaign, add two to this card's peril level for each token on it. 
Okay, so like yeah, that's remember I mentioned there's like a gentle timer to the game. So if we keep spending too much time here, we're just gonna get bumped into the boss fight, whether we're ready or not. Um, the peril level stuff, however, uh, that's like it, it's in reference to a table you look at at the end of like all of your campaigns in the core box. There's like a table you look at it's grading how well you've uh, succeeded at being adventurous, saving the world. So if you score quite high on the peril level, then basically you've saved the world, but there's not much left in it. Like the all the cities are gone, <laughs> all, the people, victory. All, all, all the people are dead. Oh know, my everyone's gosh. drowned or something like that. But if you've got a low peril score that means you did quite well you've saved a lot of people's lives okay excellent. um excellent so that's resolved so i'm going to flip over my exploration card and i'm in white wolf mountain and echoing echoing howls grow louder white wolves are on the hunt oh no i have to either fight with melee or fight with missile or ranged weapons um both of which are skill one great so we'll obviously take the one with the lower uh skill check which is the archery the range excuse me gotta get a five or more here we go 60 percent chance to shoot these wolves before they get me it's a six i got it nice um, and i gain a wolf stake Excellent. I'll be bringing that to the bank next turn. Uh, yep. Delicious that's the, wolf steak. That's the end of my turn. <laughs> Always keep it right. in your safe deposit box. That will stay. <laughs> it will never yep. go bad, too. Experience point in range as well. Oh, thank you for the reminder. Yep. Okay, so back to me. What was I doing again? I was, that's it, on the way to the Grand Exchange. So oh, I'm going to go to Varric to start off with. Uh, I'm going to explore Varric and get some leather. So I think it's a good idea now if I start taking a lot of stuff out of the, out of the clan bank in preparation for going to the Grand Exchange. So what do we need? Um, the stuff that's useful that's in there already. So you've got the leather that's useful. You've got the stone that's useful. You've got metal that's useful. Okay, so kind of all the rest of this stuff. Should I just take all of that with me? Or? Well, the wood, I think, was for building the hammer. Oh, I, yeah, I just thought, I just thought, actually, I already have metal, so I can drop that in there. <gasps> ah, awesome. There we go. Oh, that's so, a two. Is um, that meant to be a two? It is meant to be a two. Yeah, I picked up two resources earlier. So we can drop all that in there. So there's what you need for the sword and some spares. And then what I'll do is I'll just take all the rest of these resources uh, and I'll go and exchange those at the Grand Exchange for something well, else. Don't, no, don't exchange the vegetables. We need that for the garlic. Well, I'm, right. I'm, I'm the one that's cooking it anyway. So I'm ah, okay, well. fair enough. Yeah. Don't, don't yeah. exchange I, it then. I won't exchange the vegetable for we a vegetable. We need the work. nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> true okay so um i don't have oh, i do have some gold but i don't want to love my gathering i'm not particularly great at that or maybe do i no i'm going to keep it in case i need to fast travel later on actually so, can uh, can someone uh you got it you got it oh you only have one gold no. all right i was gonna say i need just one gold to level my magic at the city i mean I'll, i can give you that it just means i can't um fast yeah but, travel. If, but then if you can't get fast well, travel it's not worth it so sure. okay so that is the end of my turn yeah the uh, background to richard Okay, well, I will move into Falador. Uh, I will deposit uh, a vegetable in the clan bank, so you can yep. get that at the beginning yep. of your next turn. Oh, mm -hmm. I was cheating when I put the vegetable in there early. It's fine. We 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 totally breezed over that until you really drew attention to it just then. <laughs> <laughs> nobody nobody knew. <laughs> I threw it really far. <laughs> you did. You know, go long. It went over the bank. Yeah. Uh, I will collect a thread and I will drop that straight in the bank. You're gonna take and the sword I... out and craft it for us, Richard. Say again. You, you can take the sword out and craft it. Or are you oh, gonna yes. do that? Uh, yeah. No, I or, will do. Or... We'll do that now. Yeah, I was going to say, or are you going to do the stake hammer thing? I suppose you could do the sword and then I can bring you resources for the stake hammer. Yeah, I'll do, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll do the sword first. Sure. So, so side <laughs> quest has waited long enough. Uh, so that's three. Not at all uh, persuaded by that dragon pickaxe you want. Uh, I mean, I'm disgusted you would think I'd be that mercenary. <laughs> okay. A so that's a We're all good. <laughs> Woo! All right, let's so turn we in. have... A fancy new sword. Very nice. But that. And uh, bye bye to the old one. And I will leave that in the. Uh, I will leave that in the uh, in the clan bank for collection later. Excellent. Is that me? Yeah, that's that's you. All oh, right. Well, certainly I should move to Falador. And as I go to the bank, 
to deposit this dragon pickaxe for a friend later, I noticed the steel longsword just waiting for me. Uh, and then naturally, <clears throat> I deposit a vegetable and send it backwards through time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, be actually, because you're in the same region as Richard, you can actually just give him the dragon pickaxe. You don't need to put it in the clan bank. You Excellent. Can uh, while I'm here, I should do a business movie. <laughs> a pleasure. While I'm here, I could spend some coin to upgrade. Let's see. There's crafting, gathering, and cooking. Crafting, nah. So escalation track for Richard's last turn, and then I'll do it preemptively for your turn as well, Becca, because apparently I'm not good at remembering this. <laughs> okay. Hey, Becca, if you have a dollar to spare, I can level my magic to four next Oh turn. my gosh, so pathetic. I'm putting a dollar in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> okay, friend. <laughs> So much judgment I mean, comes with these loans. I know, at least when I did that, I didn't ask for it. I just saw I did the puppy dog eyes and hope someone would notice me. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm very confused as to why I put one XP on the third space of my crafting track, but maybe it was upside down. So I'm gonna assume I have just one in there. Uh, yeah, I don't really wanna pay to upgrade any of those. So I'll take a thread, throw it into the bank mm -hmm. and be on my way. Uh, okay, Jake. Okay. Well, I think I got to go get that money that I begged for. <laughs> Pathetic. But I will throw my meat into the bank as well. Sorry. That's okay. The... What, a, what a beautiful <laughs> phrase. I, know, I, know. Oh, I was hoping we were going to skirt over it, but we didn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I'll immediately train a wizard there to teach me better sorcery. Yep. And so... You picked up some, some stone as well, by the way. Oh, yes. I will also get stone. But this also will escalate the track, right? Because I'm going to explore wells. here. Thank you for reminding me. Um, can I put that stone right in the bank as well? You can. Some... Yeah, you can. I yeah. just do it. Let's all exchange it for what we need. And then uh, I leveled my magic with the two gold that I just spent. And that brings me up to magic yep. level four. Nice. So if you're done, I'm just going to watch you clean the tokens off. I'll get on with my turn. Yep. I'm going to go to the Grand Exchange and use the Grand Exchange. And okay, so I have the thread and one vegetable that we need for the garlic wreath. So I'm going to exchange two of the stone we've got for two more vegetables. Okay. And then what else did we need for that uh, hammer? So we've got metal in the bank already. Um, Wood and leather. What else do we need? We need wooden leather and more metal okay sure so yeah. <laughs> so we've got leather already so let's get wooden metal remind me the exchange rate again uh one for one. Oh, if you've got if you've got resources any resource that you want uh, for any other resource so it's like matter antimatter for like a warp drive it's just one for one yeah yeah okay. uh, you, if you if you've got lots of gold then you can buy you can yeah, you can buy resources for um two gold for one resource or you can sell resources uh to get one gold back for each one of them Okay, uh, and then we've got this. Um, we've got this spare stone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an extra vegetable just in case I. I don't know why I'd think this, but in case I fail a cooking test, I've done a. Just a. Not even sure why I'm bothering with that because it's never happened before. Never. Rewriting history. No. Nope. Okay. Uh, and then because I'm in the Grand Exchange, I also have to up the escalation track. That's the cost of using the Grand Exchange. So that puts our first token onto escalating carnage. Two more of those, and we'll get jumped into the boss fight. Um, Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to cook this garlic wreath. So I've got all my vegetables. I'm cooking level four, and it's complexity three. So I need to roll a six, what which I wrong? don't oh, no! get. What? So luckily, I have a spare vegetable I can throw away. I'm just, we're going to get there eventually. It's just going to be this is the hard way. This campaign's <laughs> called The Cook's Lament. <laughs> <laughs> Less vampire slayer. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, there is there is a coming of age quest in the video games, which is like co the cook's assistant is the first quest most people ever play with, um, and then the coming of age version of that is a recipe for disaster, which is definitely the version I'm playing right now. Um, okay, so that's the end of my turn. Back to Richard. Uh, well, I mean, I might as well just stay here because in your next turn you're gonna whack all the stuff for the hammer in there. Mm -hmm. Um. So, and I don't have any gold. Well, you could go. You could go. You could go somewhere else and come back next turn to get the stuff out the bank. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, in that case, let's go to. 
this place, which I can't remember what it's called. Rivington. Uh oh, we got a veggie Rivington. addict here. Can't get enough of them. I just, I, what can I say? I love uh, all forms of roughage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Rivington. Patrons of the local tavern are easily distracted by tales of adventure. Uh, well, I'm no good at thieving, but it's only a four, so you never know. Nine. So that's two gold coins. Excellent. That's, uh, did you just straight up steal from an audience? Is that what you did? Yep. I oh, got so. it. Okay, cool. <laughs> Maybe my my stories are so bad, I essentially stole their time from them. <laughs> <laughs> there. Just objectively, that was the Yeah. Abuse. I got it. Okay. Uh, and then I get another vegetable. <laughs> I think. Uh, sure. And yeah, and a uh, vegetable and experience in thieving. Excellent. Okay, and that is my turn. Becca. Okay, so uh, I'm just hanging out. I don't have any particular goals. I don't even have a side quest for sequ quest a lot, which seems upsetting. <laughs> so maybe I should uh, take Gertrude's cat. Um, what's dig site? So dig site's over here. You'd need to accept the quest in Barak, so you'd need to spend a gold to get to Barak to get the quest, which is really close to dig sites anyway. Uh, sure. I'm going to fast travel to Varric mm -hmm. by spending one coin. Oh, no. But then es I can't level up my melee. Escalation track. Yeah, I did that. Um, oh, boo. It's so much more exciting to explore. But we'll do that next time. With my one coin... Uh, nah. some as well. I'll just take that leather. There you go. Do we have the leather needed for the hammer? Uh, I think we do. Yeah. Uh, you could always, or do we? Oh, I haven't put it in the bank yet. You could always put it in the bank as a spare. <laughs> I'll put a spare in the bank. Okay. Um, which makes it Jake's turn. Hmm. Well, if you're gonna just harvest vegetables, then I'm gonna go harvest some steak. Uh, because I think we just need more resources, right? Is that kind of our mm -hmm. game plan here? Plant the steak seeds, harvest the steak. <laughs> All right, we're exploring in Taverly one more time. And we'll explore here. And it looks like it's a random event. So you got the noob. It, it's the noob. Oh, look Ooh. at that guy in his forehead. Give coins for a sword, please, a goateed man says with a blank expression on his default features. Oh, my God, it sounds like you, Jake. <laughs> 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 Noted. You may take him up on his offer by discarding two coins. Ah, if you do collect Vault 33 and remove this card from the game, I show him my empty pockets. You do. You do. Yeah. So oh, the noob goes away in uh, disappointment. To be clear, I was just referring to the give coins for sword, please comment. But the rest. No, I'm not. Applied. I'm not personally. <laughs> okay. <there it> is. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you explored Tavoli. You got the meat already as well. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. you done. So I am going to go back to Varric so I can deposit some stuff into the clan bank. Uh, I was going to get rid of all the stuff that's not to do with the garlic reef. So that's the wood, the leather, and the metal. Um, go down there. Uh, I'm going to explore Varric, which is going to get some leather, which can also go in the clan bank because I don't need that. Um, we're going to go up the escalation track by one. Uh, I'm not going to spend any gold for experience points, but I am going to try to cook this gar this garlic reef again using three dice, trying to get a six, which we succeed um, at this time. Yes. Yeah! There we go. Woo! Okay, so, um, so collect Vault Card 4 and gain three experience in cooking, so a whole level in cooking. Wow. Five. And it's not beneficial. Oh, uh, sorry, I'm I think not... it's just a two there. So it's two plus the one for the skill test. Thank you. Um, so... Uh, we have the wreath of garlic so this is a valuable tool in the slaying of vampires when this adventurer takes a skill test from being attacked by count draenor they may re-roll the die of their choice this makes you much more resilient to count draenor's attacks Ooh. incredible and one person holds that obviously that's cool one one person yeah yeah so that is also uh the next part of our campaign quest complete we just need the steak hammer now and then we're ready to fight count draenor <gasps> nice okay. speaking of which i passed to falador Move the, the track up one, but I am. It's a. What's the difficulty on the crafting test? Uh, for the stake hammer, it is uh, complex complexity three. You need to roll six. AFK so I, I'm rolling. I've got uh, four in crafting. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so I'm rolling three dice. Then I've got my dragon picks, and I'm rolling the fourth dice, and I get to add plus two to that result. So yeah, dice. that's a definite, definite uh, pass. And there the hammer go. is yeah. ours. Yes, there is the stake uh, hammer. Stake hammer, hammer with which I will, I will immediately stick into the clan bank. Oh, and I've moved all the dice again. What did you, what did you oh, do? Looks with like the dice? they fell off. The, okay, cool. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Uh, so that um, the person with the stake can have something to hit it with. Nice. Now, to be clear, this is different than my stake. Yes. Uh, yes, yeah, this different. is different yes, from you, your wolf stake. We yes. cannot hammer this I, I stake if, into him. Okay. I think if you well, were just you slapping... Could, you could tenderize it. You could flatten it out. Okay. Flatten it you... out. Flash fry, but it oh. wouldn't be as useful in killing vampires now. <laughs> got it. Got or just, it. Or just insult him just by hitting him in the, in the face with some There we like, go. Yeah, okay. cold cut to the eye. I like it. Yeah. Especially okay, the way okay. uh, Jamie cooks them. Uh, that would <laughs> yes, be very yeah. insulting. <laughs> Why does yes, everything have only. an egg wash? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have completed all of our objectives on the campaign board. So uh, all that's required now is as soon as we're ready to fight Count Draenor, one of us goes to Draenor Manor, and that's going to kick off the boss fight, and we're all going to jump into it at the same time. So is there anything else we want to accomplish before we st- kick that off, or do we just want to go I straight mean, into I the boss fight? I think we're pretty ready skill wise. I'm going to take right? my turn to go to this dig site. Since I'm not close enough to get straight to Draenor Manor anyway. Sure. Okay. <gasps> oh, yeah. Okay. Because it's my turn, yeah? Yep, it is your turn. Dig site. I'll take one gathering XP for going here. Uh, and then I would like to... Oh, sorry. Just kidding. I don't get to do that if I do Gertrude's Cat, which sounds like a lot of fun. I'm going to perform a quest action to locate fluffs because gertrude lost her cat fluffs and desperately wants to find her we're gonna bring her home dead or alive (laughs) so that's a (laughs) gathering uh i need a six i get two dice Mm -hmm. and we can do it we'll do it for the cat for the cat okay here we go a ten and two i'll take it Quest okay, so, complete. So it's um, collect a vault card 12 to continue the quest. You got the second part of the quest. Oh, okay, great. Uh, let me good. go ahead and take my stuff so I don't forget. I get five in the gathering, plus the one for being successful with the symbol. Oh, for, for doing the test? So basically two uh, so, levels? Yeah, so you'll get you'll get that when you've completed the whole quest. Oh, you've got okay. the one you've got the one for completing your gather well you one for the gathering test, and then you've got the next part of the quest to do. You'll get the sorry, tripped on my words. Once you've done the whole quest, you'll get all the rewards for it. Okay, got it. So I won't take anything yet. Yep. You've spotted Fluffs hiding under some crates, but she refuses to come out. Perhaps her favorite food might change her mind? To advance this quest, cook seasoned sardine- sardines in dig site. Now, can I do that this turn or next turn? Impossible. If you had the, if you had the resources, you could do it uh, this turn, but you, you haven't got the resources on you at the moment. They're right. in the clan. A lot of these are in the clan bank. Of course. Well, we're never going to get to that. So um, I don't get the uh, XP in cooking, do I? Uh, you got the one for taking the no, not for cooking, no. But you got the one gathering uh, XP for taking the test when you were searching for Gertrude's cat. No coin if I can't oh, bring the cat back alive. <laughs> it seems. Truth. Yeah. Okay. She's quite picky. Quite picky in that regard, actually. Cats. Uh, I think that makes it my turn. Oh, and um. I, oh, nope. Sorry. Just kidding. Sorry. I'm just seeing the steak hammer over in the uh, the the bank, <laughs> but I can't get to it. Well, you you yeah, started it's, in. It's it's um, okay. Doesn't honestly before before we go into the boss fight, we'll have a chance to like rejig who's got what equipment anyway. Perfect. So oh, um, okay. don't don't there's no there's no particular rush to get the uh, the stake hammer onto the right person. Great. Well, I think with my turn before we go on the fight, I'm just gonna kind of go to the city because I don't really know what else there's else to do because I'll you can't level up skills in the boss fight, right? No, no you can't. Right. So I'll come uh, join uh, the cook over at Falador here. And I have mm-hmm. a meat to contribute, but I mean, are we, are we just, we're just stashing stuff at this point. We're not even going to use it in exchange, are we? So what turns do we have left really? So after you, there's me, I could go, there's no skilling points near me apart from gathering, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, I'm just trying to think how we could use this. I don't think Richard. there's much we can, especially from where I was. So I think yeah, I'm just going to 
collect okay. my thread and we'll just move forward. Sure. Uh, that does raise the escalation one, which I'll mark. I think what I might try to do is I might have a go at trying to upgrade my wooden short bow. because uh, I've not tried that yet. That's what does that need? That needs metal wood and two thread. Do we have that? Metal, uh, I'll put thread wood, in the bank right now thread. just in case we do. Yeah, we do we do all of have a lot of stuff ready. So I'm gonna have to get to have a go at that, I suppose. Oh do it, yeah. Excellent. Okay, so why not just put it in there and I'll craft it for you? That would be much more sensible. All right, yeah. so uh, during my turn, I'm going to explore uh, Varrock again, which allows me to put my wooden short bow in the clan bank. Um, and I'll get some leather, which can also go in the clan bank. Quick question. On Richard's turn, once he goes into Draenor Manor, does he get the opportunity to craft? Uh, that needs to be the last thing he does. So we, we starts kicks off the boss fight. We've got one opportunity to sort of spread our gear around each other. Uh, to make sure we've got the right gear for each person, then we jump straight into the boss fight. So we need to craft it first. But you can do it as the first thing you craft during it, this turn. Then move in and then kick off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you, yeah, you, sorry, you need to. Doesn't matter. Let's just say you're going to do that. You explore, you get the wooden short bow, you get all the stuff you need. Then we can move forward because we know what's going to happen. We're at this point, we're ready for the boss fight. So let's just get ready for it. So it's your turn, Rich. Um, in that case, I shall craft you a lovely short bow. Thank you. Needing six. Yep. Getting nice. it. Nice. Well over. So that Don't becomes an a... oak short bow. An oak short bow. Oh, you get to add two to the result of your um, uh, equipment die. Mm -hmm. Obviously, put it, leave it straight in the back for you. Um, resources. And you get a crafting experience as well. I do indeed. Okay, then do you want to walk into Drano Manor and we can just kick the yeah, fight off? Yeah, let's move in. Okay. So whilst let's I'm just end of the boss fight, do you guys want to have a talk about who needs what equipment and stuff of the stuff that we've got? I mean, Mr. So, Normal has his staff. He's good. Uh, I have the whereabouts of Gertrude's cat, if anybody's <laughs> interested. You got that steak too, right? Yeah. Um, how about I go ahead and grab the steak hammer because yeah, it goes very well with the steak. Definitely have that hammer. If I had a hammer... <laughs> I'd hammer in the morning. <laughs> Same. All right. So you've turned the campaign board over. And that's so where this is this is where the boss fight takes place. Um, so on the on the reverse of a campaign board, because it's a different campaign board which campaign, that's where the boss fight takes place, and it allows us to theme the campaign board and the terrain cards for, you know, where the actual boss fight location happens. So this is going to take place in the basement of Draenor Manor, uh, where Count Draenor's crypt is. Um, so. Um, so for the boss fights, let's say there's one that you do for the second campaign, which is Demon Slayer. That takes place in kind of like a, like a sort of a, a Stonehenge type looking area where there's some dark wizards trying to summon a demon. So the whole place looks different and the terrain cards are different and the whole situation is different. Um, so it allows us to customize uh, what's going on with the boss fight a lot more easily. It also means that instead of sort of playing on this zoomed out fast travel map, like we've been doing for most of the game so far, we really zoom into the ground level for the boss fights um, so we can customize what's going on there and give you a slightly different and more tactical experience from turn to turn. Okay, so how this is going to work is we've all been moved onto the boss board where there's now some terrain cards. Um, the person with the highest crafting is going to start on the same <coughs> sorry, same square as Count Draeno because they have gone in and opened up the coffin, started the fight off, which in this case is Richard. Um, Count Draeno is going to start off at 10 health um, and then we get to start off at 20 health, but minus one for every damage we've taken on the game board so far. So it's one health on uh, one damage on Becca, and that's it. So we just start at 19 health rather than 20. I forgot to um, ask you have... to cook me a lobster. That's okay. I don't. I, I would have burnt it anyway, so it probably wasn't a <laughs> wasn't a terrible idea not to. Yeah. Um, so instead of having uh, individual health in a boss fight, we have a pool of health between us. If we if we all drop to zero health together, then we then we lose. And if obviously if Count Drano drops to zero health, then we won. Um, so how the turn order is going to work is I've drawn these initiative cards for all of our characters as they've been drawn randomly and they have one for each of our miniatures. So as you can tell, the wizard is going to go first. So Jake and then uh, Becca and then my uh, Richard and then myself. Uh, and then after each one of those is a boss behavior card. So we're going to work ourselves from left to right and for the turn order. Once we've got to the end of this, if the fight continues, we'll take those cards in, shuffle them and redraw them and carry on. 
So each of the four types were sh- shuffled separately. You dealt the players out, and then you put the bad guys, you put Count Draenor's moves in between, right? Correct. Got Correct. it. Okay, cool. Well, the wizard goes first, and yep. I want to take this opportunity to announce that your guys' Kickstarter, I think, just hit a quarter million pounds a few minutes awesome. ago. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Congratulations on that. And there's a link to that in the link in the chat, uh, folks, if you guys want to get a hold of this game as well. But for now, I think I'm going to murder this vampire. So uh, the wizard gets to go. And I believe I can, uh, in this mechanic, just attack him straight up with magic, right? Where's that skill listed again? Okay, so we've got the Count Draenor reference sheet over here. Uh, So that tells us what our combat actions are for this particular boss fight. Uh, So if you're going to do a magic attack, that's a a skill test, like they are on the main uh, exploration phase. Uh, That's complexity three. And each six you roll is going to be a wound on Count Draenor. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going to roll a bunch. Oh, wait, each of them? Yep, each of them. So if you roll a lot more, you're going to do a whole lot of wounds. Oh, awesome. Oh, well, we're going to do a lot because my magic's at four, so I roll three dice, and I've got an air battle staff, so I roll four dice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Um, let's magic missile them into oblivion. We're rolling the dice. It's a four, four, seven, two. That means one wound, unfortunately. One wound. So we've dropped him down from 10 health to nine. Uh, and it also says that you can move Count Draenor up to one space because you blasted him with magic. Now, I uh, feel like that's going to be something I need to look at the Eternal Fury card, right? Yeah, so you can, you can. Uh, all this is open information, so you can see what Count Draenor is about to do next. So he's going to move one space towards you because it's pointing to the left on the initiative track. Cool. Um, so no matter what you do with him, he's going to move one space towards you. Then he's going to attack vertically, which means everything in like a top to bottom line of squares is going to get mm-hmm. hit at once. Mm-hmm. So if he stays where he is right now, he's going to move towards you and then hit both you and Richard because that's the vertical line he's on. Right. So what if I place him uh, here, then he would move towards me on his turn, presumably here? Yeah, well, you, you can choose because it's the same distance either way. So he'd move either this way or this way. But if you move this way... But then way, he only attacks gonna... one of us vertically. Correct, correct. So that would be yeah. tactically better, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do so... that, especially because Becca has a great defense. So okay, I'll move so... him here to the space close to the Becca. Okay, Fantastic. Okay. That's, that's the it. end. That's you can. So at the end of your turn, Eternal Fury goes off. He moves one space towards um, towards Jake. So we decided that was going to be up in the corner here, uh, and he's going to attack vertically, which means he's going to do a, a sweeping attack and hit Becca's knight. Um, so you, Becca, need to take a defense three uh, test, and you need to roll a seven. Defense three. So I only get I'm at defense two, so I get okay. one die. One die at that, yeah. So what what did you mean when you oh. said I had high defense magic? Uh, it probably wasn't. I'm sorry. High. I should have put it on the skiller. I guess. It's okay. I got a nine. Oh, nice. Okay. You did. Okay, so you passed anyway. So you've avoided the attack. So that actually then makes it uh, your turn, Becca. So you can move during your turn up to one square uh, as long as it's moving uh, in across one of the flat facings. You can't move diagonally. So you could move into the same square as Count Draenor. Let me check. <laughs> the Count Draenor board real quick and see about melee, because that's my main skill. <gasps> yep. Five. So it's oh. normally quite difficult. <laughs> normally quite difficult. However, you have the stake and the stake hammer, mm. which is going to make it a bit easier for you. Gotcha. So inflict one wound for each successful die. Let's go ahead and move into his space and hit him with the stake. Okay. So let me check my stake stats here uh the complexity is two lower and the target number is three lower (gasps) oh nice so it's a three slash five five Mm -hmm. oh that means i get to roll all of the dice including the equipment because my equipment's good enough Uh, so uh your character still only has two hands so you've got the stake hammer and the stake so uh, it probably would have been a good idea actually thinking about this before the combat to throw the steel longsword probably at Richard because he hasn't got a melee weapon at the moment. Oops. Because, um, yeah, because you, yeah. Uh, could we... We did that, didn't we? We can, we can, we we can retroactively yeah, say yeah, we, yeah, did because yeah, we, we did, did that. that. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, we did that. We definitely did that. We, we said cool. it telepathically. Uh, great, mm-hmm. so I don't get an equipment die, do I? You got the other three. That's You know, you don't get the equipment die, but you got the other three to roll and you need to roll fives because you've got you the got stake coming. Okay, we will roll fives. All fives. Nine, uh, eight, one. Pretty That's close. Two successes. One, two. There we go. Okay. So that ends your turn. Then we go to regenerate. So Count Draenor heals a wound. However, Boo. if he was wounded by a melee attack made by an adventurer equipped with the stake this round, he doesn't. Becca! Sweet. Well done. <laughs> oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he, from wherever he is, he's going to move on to the coffin terrain. 
Uh, and he's going to attack whoever's on the coffin terrain, which is Richard. And so you need to, to take a defense test. And we all know I had okay. read the next step in initiative, and so planned my oh, turn yeah. accordingly. You did. You did. Yeah, yeah. Good. Speaking of, Not I'm going to eat. Got it? No problem. Okay, Woo! so let's regenerate done. Then we're on to Richard's turn as well. What do you want to do, Richard? Do you want to attack Cardano uh, or do you want to do something else? There's yeah, well, I mean, he's on do. the thing. He's on the square and I've got uh, I've got the nice new sword now, so... You do. It's... it's uh, Yeah. I don't think it's quite good enough to hit Cardano without this. Yeah, okay. You've done one damage to him anyway. Hey! What did you... Oh, no, because you need to roll an eight because you haven't got the stake. Oh, well, in that case, I won't do that. I won't hit him. I yeah. will re yeah. terrain. Um, the read the terrain for the uh, benefit of the audience is uh, one adventurer may move for each successful die. If there are two or more successful dice, count Draenor may be moved instead. So you're going to shift the other adventurers around the game board. Oh. Yeah. Um, and that way, can only roll one dice. But that's a success. And. So it probably wouldn't be a terrible idea there to move. Um, me actually because Call of the Dead is going to be moving one space towards me anyway so if you move me away he won't reach me true but if I move back uh, in I suppose no if he moves towards you no she'll not be, not be able to get him anyway so yeah, yeah. I will move you down here thank you Okay. Dinata. and then Call of the Dead is going to be one space towards the archer who is me so he's going to move this way uh, he attacks only in the same space so he misses completely during my turn. Okay, he's going to continue to come after me. So I'm going to continue to run away with the brave archer that I am. <laughs> brave Sir Robin. Um, and yeah. is going to take a ranged uh, test to shoot Count Drainer as I run away. So I have ranged three. So that's going to be two dice. Uh, and I also have my oak short bow. Uh, thank you, Richard. So we get the equipment die as well. And any sixes I roll will be damage. Uh, that's one of them. Okay, we got him down to six health. And notably, you can do that because your range attack is range two right now correct right? correct yeah so range so I can, i'm the only one that can hit from range two so that's counting squares one and then two to get him uh so he's then gonna do a lash out as we know we'll moves one space towards me so he's either gonna we can either have him move onto the coffin terrain but if we do that he'll end this round there and get a health point back so probably not the best idea so it's probably better to have him move down into this corner here but it does Ooh. mean he's gonna attack me um if you do that i won't be able to hit him next turn well we're gonna um the thing is, we're going to have to re, like redraw this. Oh yes, um, that's true. That's true. I'm not track next. anyway. So right, right. yes, he, if you he might hit not him, be next. But he gained back a life. What was the point besides you uh, looking cool? Yes. Also that. Well, looking cool is pretty important. But that's I agree. Fair. So I, so I have defense too, so I can roll one die. But because I've got the garlic wreath, I can re-roll it if I fail. Nope, I failed it. Second chance to ignore the attack. Nope, still failed it. So I take, uh, suffer a wound. So we suffer one wound because I failed the defense test. Okay, so now we got to reset. The order of the cards so we're going to shuffle together all the initiative cards and the baby cards so it takes me a second because tabletopia is slightly awkward we can assist you appreciate that thank you and we've got one spare behavior card from up here as well those are not perfectly stacked yeah but i will fix it thank you <laughs> maybe i won't <laughs> anyway you can shuffle the other way i got it Oh. Tabletopia is confirmed. I just don't even bother. Just love it. I assume it manages it by itself. <laughs> I think we've messed I think we've I think we've messed these cards up enough now. Surely there's a random order here. That's a fair so, point. Um, yeah, that's a yeah, fair point. So let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. And get the other out of the way there. There we Gorgeous. go. There's a order. So actually, after all that, it is you again, Jake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I can only move one turn and take one action. Is that right? Yeah. So you have some other options in ahead of you here. You've got read the terrain like Richard took, where you could right. uh, move another player character. You also have sleight of hand. So sleight of hand allows you to actually shift the order of these initiative cards around. Uh, so a really good one I can spot immediately is regenerate is coming before Becca gets her turn right now. So if we switch those over, she'll be able to hit him with a stake again and stop him from regenerating health. Hey, I like that plan. And I'm pretty sneaky, actually. So I have a, a thieving of five. So I'm pretty sure I can accomplish that. So let's sure. do it. Yep. I'll roll three dice here. And I need a what? 
a five? You need a six. 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 Can do. Got I it. got three of them. Oh, okay. Sh- so we can switch the order of some of these cards around. So I think let's read that. So you can one adventure or behavior card maybe move one slot to the left or right to finish your track for each successful die. So you can take that regenerate card and throw it right the way to the back if you want to. Like three well, spaces. Well, is that was that our best thing? Because we want to delay his regeneration as much as possible. Yeah, we also so it would go one, two, three. So I think it slips in here between the archer and eternal fury. So here's what my question is. Uh can I put myself after Call of the Dead to get to go again? Uh, it doesn't get, it doesn't like to go again. Basically, it's the you always ah. read from the left. It's the next unactivated card. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, well, I'll let anybody choose where they want to move. Otherwise, then. Okay. Because we got one more. Uh, oh, uh, can I be helpful? No, I'm already good next to Call of the Dead. Regenerate. I see. Yeah. It is done. I think we're yeah. I think we're okay. Because we, okay. I just I realized I read the card wrong. It was one card for each successful die, and we just moved one card three spaces instead of moving three cards one space. If that oh, it's one space for each yeah. die. Okay. And then my last okay. question is, I guess should I move? I guess we want him to come closer, but I don't want us to go to that center space. Yeah. So at the moment he's going to be moving one space towards the skiller. So he's going to be moving up to probably here, I think, next, and not attacking anybody this time. All right. Team. I'll stay where I'm at. Okay, so Call of the Dead, he moves one space towards Richard, which probably makes sense to go here, right? Mm-hmm. That's yep. his turn, done. and then it is Richard's turn. What do you want to do? Hmm. Well, I'm not, not much good in this fight, frankly. <laughs> Bake Yet. him a cake! I mean, I would, but... I have even worse skill in cooking. So, than so you can you can still use the melee range and magic skill test. You just only get one die at them because your skills aren't very high. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I'll I'll just take a range attack on him. Okay. Great call. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, but I, I'm good at absorbing damage. So if you you know maneuver him so he hits we could, me, I just thought um, I thought of a way we. I'm just thinking about. Oh no, that's fine. I was gonna say I thought we where we could possibly wreck on that. If you happen to roll really well at a gathering test, I suppose that's not going to happen easily. Though is it? You could move. No, it's not going to happen. So you could move. Uh, no, I was thinking. That's could... what I was trying to do in the. I was thinking about doing in the previous Ta- turn. But... Tactically, Richard, does it make sense for you to take a step back away from him before you fire your ranged attack? Probably, because you have a two range. So he's going can... to attack me next. Well, two spaces gonna... towards the closest adventure. So that will. Either way, um... he's going to hit me, isn't he? So that's actually going to target um, Becca because it'll be the the, cl- the closest card is the card to his. Oh, that's cool. Close to initiative. In that case, good. I want him close. <laughs> oh well, not in that order. Um, what about let's instead of having taking your skill, skill test, you could you could do sleight of hand and then move and then move plus. him closer to me. Uh, I'm going to take a re-roll from the chat to do so since we already did the roll, right? Yeah, that's true. Yep. So if you do a sleight of hand, you could move Bloodlust ahead of Becca, which is going to get him to yeah, move. And then he's going to attack me because I can tank that. A hearty yes. thank you to Nightcat Nautabot. So, okay. So we have you step backwards and do sleight of hand. Yeah. Your turn then, ends. He moves two spaces really towards you. Setting him perfectly up. There you go. And he's going to attack you, Richard, and you're going to tank this hit because that's what you do. <laughs> that is what I am for. Do it, tank! Got it. Too high. You got it. Okay. So blood this, is, blood this is done. You did. Yeah, blood this is done. And that makes it Becca's turn. Oh, you know I'm going to hit him with the stake. Mm-hmm. So we determined already that gets me three dice. No yep. equipment so just, die. Just going to move you down. It's the same space as Condrano. So you can do that. Oh, thank you. Yes. Of course, of course. You need fives. Eight, four, Shoot and it. two. Okay. So you've dropped into five health. <gasps> this is where his enrage Ooh. is going to trigger. Um... Okay, so Count Draenor lashes out in a frenzy and rushes towards the coffin in an attempt to shield himself from damaging blows and perhaps buy time for something else. So Count Draenor is going to get removed from the play area as he jumps into his coffin and slams the door shut behind him. <laughs> uh, and he is going to oh, raise all no. the skeletons in the Kwanzaa room and he's going to push each adventure onto a skeleton card. Hey, now. So we're going to have to deal with these skeletons. So from this point onwards, Count Draenor doesn't take any more turns, um, but we have to get in there and open that coffin. Remember you said you are a bit useless earlier, Richard? You've got to take a crafting test to open the coffin, so you need to get in there and break wow. the coffin open Hello. for us. <laughs> okay. Um, 
In the meantime, though, the rest of us have got to deal with these skeletons first, though. Uh, if you read the skeleton cards, it says, instead of taking their turn as normal, an adventurer on this space must take the skill test to defeat the skeleton, oh, which boy. is a melee, melee skill test. Uh, if you don't pass the skill test, then the skeleton's going to hit you and push you off the skeleton anyway. Um, and when you fail, you do not level up, too. That's right? correct. You, okay. you don't level up, yeah. But you would, you would suffer wounds. So the next person in the initiative track is actually me. Uh, I only have a melee of one, so I'm going to roll one die at this. If I get a six, I defeat the skeleton. Which I do. Oh, nice. Good knock him over. Okay, let's get me off the skeleton card. That becomes a bones card. Ha-ha. That's my turn, John. That makes sense. Okay, so the regenerator takes place, but he's in his coffin, so it doesn't trigger. Eternal Fury doesn't trigger. Comes the end of the round. Count Draenor gets one health back because he's in the coffin. Uh, and then we have to resort out all the cards again for the next round. Oh, this is going well. This is going all right. You got tons well, of life to make more mistakes. Yeah. We could stop and cook some eggs if we wanted. <laughs> Everybody I don't know. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Stoves. Everybody have a slice of quiche. <laughs> <laughs> One more last round. Hey, that was some good hey shuffling. it's the wizard. Okay, okay. so it is Generates you. next. Yeah, um, it is, but, but once he's in the coffin, it's not going to trigger. Oh, copy that. Well, I'm on a pile of bones that suddenly came to life and decided to fight me. So I'm going to use my melee skill of one to yep. <laughs> defend for my life. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'll take the die right here. Here we go. Six or more, 50% chance to survive. Yes. Nice. It. So it gets flipped to its looming side. Is that correct? Correct. Great. Correct. That's your turn. So we oh, skip and then regenerate. May I move? No, because after no, the first, you, then take action. That's right? it. You're, you're, yeah, your whole t- your whole turn is the skeleton. Sure. So regenerate doesn't trigger. Then we go to Becca's turn. Who needs to deal with the skeleton as well? I too will do so. Uh, I can't use my steak hammer here, but I am pretty good at melee with a yep. four skill. So that means uh, I get three dice. That's it. Nine. Got it. We'll do it. Beat the skeleton down. So we'll flip that skeleton card back over. Uh, Eternal Fury doesn't trigger. Uh, so it's back to my turn again. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to try to take a... Well, I'm going to move off the Bones card for a start, and then I'm going to try and take a Read the Terrain Gathering Test to move Richard off his, his skeleton so he doesn't even have to deal oh. with it, and he can just go and try and open up that That's uh, coffin. It is. So I'm going to try and roll six. I only get one die at it, though, which I do. So we'll shift him off the Bones card. Uh, that's the end of my turn. Call the Dead doesn't trigger. Richard's turn. Go and break the coffin open, Richard. Yes, sir. Okay. And that is a... Well, it's really mad because I'm really, really good at crafting. You're so good at this. You're going to pick pocket this this. coffin. You're going to get four dice. (laughs) You do need to get an eight. uh, So that equipment die might be helping there to get you a six on that. Okay, plus two to it. That's an eight. We're all good. And I'll just roll that one. Nice one. Okay, so the coffin's broken back open again. Count Draenos back out on the game board. And the I've game fun boys. for as normal. So lash out triggers. Uh, he's going to move space towards Richard, where he already is, so he doesn't move. And he's going to attack horizontally, so he's going to hit both me and uh, Richard. So we need both of you to take defense tests. Well, I will go first, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. So you're fine. What That's a roll. Incredible. So I'll, roll. Try and, wow. I'll try and defend it as well. I do not, but I have my garlic. And I, def- I get it on the second one. Nice. Okay, so that's the end of the round. We need to re-sort all the initiative out. Uh, while we're restarting, I just want to highlight that JKenGL from chat has kickstarted the game because we're playing it and they love, they love the experience we've had so far. Aww. Yeah, thanks, awesome. Thank you so much for that. We really appreciate that. We really do. Yeah, this Sorry. game is nice and fluid. I love how quickly it can flow once you get the mechanics down. And the mechanics are not hard to get. It's great. You get an egg oh, wash for great. that. <laughs> <laughs> so what a great job, uh, Fraser McFetridge, who is, I think, where is he tonight? He's, he's down south somewhere in, in the UK. He is, yeah. He, well, he's been working on another stream, actually. Um, so, yeah, yeah he's, yeah. he's, got, he's uh, the lead so... developer, and he's done a, a really, really great job with it. He has. He's done fantastically well. Uh, okay, so... Um... So it's actually Becca's turn first here. In the <gasps> we love to see it. So I, <laughs> well, we don't when I can't move into his space. So where's he going next? I want to be there. He's going to move towards you, actually. 
I wish he would do that first. So <laughs> let's see. If I can't melee attack right now, I could try for the ranged. You or could. I could read the terrain. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, does anyone want to be moved? Hmm. So he's going to attack horizontally during his turn. So he's either going to move here and attack you and Jake, or he's going to move here and he's going to attack me and Richard. Um, I mean, I... So, so you could... So how about I take my turn to move you, Jamie, because Richard can handle it. Yeah. Yep. That's why, yeah. Sounds, sounds good. But then how do I ensure that he goes for Richard and not go up? Oh, we choose. Uh, so because... Yeah, we choose because he's moving towards you. I see. As long as you stay still. Okay, so what do I need to do? That's one adventurer may move. So that's read the terrain. I have a gathering skill. Two. Up two. So two dice. That's it. Five and you a three. Don't, don't pass it though, sadly. Okay. Okay, that's I fine. So what? Anyway. It's probably still better that he moves this way uh, because while you two are on the bones cards, um, the, bo the effect of the bones card is adventurers in a space can never roll more than one die when taking a melee or defense test. Ooh. So that'd be quite difficult for you. So let's, oh, let's uh, have me and Richard. Let's actually, did I have a chance to move off of it? Uh, you you could have done, but if you move, remember Count Drain is going to move towards you. So if you moved here, he would have I come see. up towards you and attacked you. Okay. Well, so, I, I uh, could move down though, but then then he gets three attacks, and that's not right either. Okay, got it. That's it. That's it. So my defense test, I fail the first one. My garlic re rolls it. Nope, I don't pass that. So I'm going to take a wound. Richard, you oh, need no. to take your defense test as well. Yeah, bring it. Go on, Vampy. Let's see what you got. Oh, uh, you pass. easy. Easy. My turn, I'm going to stay exactly where I am and shoot him with my bow. So I'm going to Make take... Make sure you don't hit me, please. I will do fantastic well and thread the needle and miss you and ah. hit Count Draenor twice. Oh, nice. Yes. Hey, Whoa. we're real close now. Got him down to four health. So Call of the Dead, one space towards Richard. So he's going to move onto the coffin terrain Boop. and he's going to attack the same space, so just Richard. Richard, no! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Somersault, Richard, somersault. Serpentine. All got good. It. Nice. You got it. Okay, Richard, it's also then your turn. Uh, well, I mean, I might as well uh, just hit him with... Um, so ranged or magic probably might be better than, than a melee attack because it's an eight to deal damage to him with the sword. Uh, the steel long but sword. Is I'm yeah, okay. It's complexity just... five. Okay, let's mm. go magic then. <gasps> got him. Ten! And you can I'm move Count Drain all one space if you want to. Fang face. <laughs> uh, he's going to be moving back towards you, kind of regardless where you push him, so it doesn't really matter. So he's yeah. going to. Um, so he, he's going to go right him. back, right? I mean, just just put him in a space with you, Jamie. Fair enough. Nice. Push him company. back. Yeah, no, thank you. Appreciate that. So I'm yeah, not so lonely right. anymore. And then he runs yeah, out and attacks you. Uh, <laughs> and then you take another defense. Away. All right, the wizard steps over, looks Draenor in the side of his face, and says, Abracadabra. That's we're going to cast that's well done. some magic yep. okay. at him. So, so with, with my on... staff, that's a four, I believe. It is, yeah, four dice. Looking to All sixes. right, let's cook this vampire. Um, Five, yeah. eight, nine, six. That's three successes, yes. baby. Him out. Boom, 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 boom. He is out of that. Well done. Um, Richard, do you mind reading the victory condition on the Draenor reference sheet, please? I can indeed. Uh, I can find it. Just some it. reason, Just my, it. my yeah, my mouse is not showing for some reason. Uh, uh, could you? Mm. <laughs> I think you might be best. Oh, uh, got it. Ah, we're there. Finally, <laughs> victory. <laughs> Count Draenor clutches the stake in his chest and collapses to the ground, never to rise again. Ha! The village of Draenor has been saved from the monstrous vampire. Congratulations, you have completed the RuneScape Kingdom's demo. Hey. Yeah! Okay, so 
uh, if we were playing the full game from this point, uh, we could roll, if we wanted to, straight into the next campaign. I imagine we'd probably play that on our next game session because we've just done three hours. Um, but we could roll with our characters exactly as they are, with the health, with the, well, the experience, the levels, the equipment that we've gained. The only thing we would lose is the campaign-specific stuff, so that's like the stake hammer and the garlic that we don't need from now on. Uh, we'd roll straight into the next campaign, which is Demon Slayer with the uh, with the characters we already have. So we get to continue onwards and upwards with the characters we already have, rolling through all the campaigns, the core box, uh, towards the end, where will eventually face Elvarg, who is the uh, the titular character of the game. Excellent. Well, maybe we need to just have you cook up one more cake, this time using all that garlic we found. Oh, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> garlic cake? <laughs> well, you know, he's the cook, so that's, that's what true. we got. Uh, well, what a pleasure to have played with Jamie, Richard, and Jake. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for having us, Becca. And Jamie and Richard, thank you so much for teaching us this game. This was a blast. What a great, awesome adventure. And in two and a half hours, that felt like epic. That was amazing. I, thank you. Yeah, I, I think must say, I haven't dived into, you know, the OS RuneScape or RuneScape 3, but I, I felt very video game-esque and absolutely a blast. So thanks again. Uh, one more time, everybody follow that link in chat or if you're uh, in the description, if you're watching on YouTube, and you can see our special referral link so they know we sent you over to the Kickstarter, which is just crushing it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Final thoughts? Uh, support this game. How many, when, How it's only on for 10 days, is that right, the Kickstarter? Yeah, so it launched today, so mm -hmm. we're on for and Kickstarter for 10 days, so uh, come and have a look at the campaign page, see if you like it. So this is only one of the campaigns you get to play within the core box. There are three more on top of it, so plenty of content to okay. go through. And that's not even counting the expansions, so there's lots of gameplay. Uh, yeah, we've, yeah. I, I hope that's what's come across this evening is that it's, uh, it's a super accessible game as well. Uh, the rules are not too difficult to understand. Um, there's a lot of different things you can explore with it. It's great for your family as well. People haven't tried RuneScape before, so came across very yeah, well. Yeah, it feels like a great entry game for this kind of a uh, um this kind of a game type as well. And additionally, Steamforge is known for making a lot of expansions in my experience. So there'll be a lot mm -hmm. more stuff out there, I'm sure. Yep, yep. So, so in the Kickstarter, we're offering uh, three uh, expansions. That each of them have a different campaign to them, go with them as well. There's a Kickstarter exclusive expansion, which has the, the Colin Aramancer uh, as the recipe for disaster villain. That's like a bonus side quest people can play through. And there's lots of extra exclusive content as well, like, uh, you know, um, there's uh, special edition dice. There's limited edition uh, neoprene play mats and all kinds of other nice stuff for people to play with. Wooden awesome. tokens as well. We actually inadvertently got a taste of the recipe for disaster tonight with how Jamie was rolling dice when yeah. trying to okay. You are welcome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's a Kickstarter exclusive for you. <laughs> Incredible. Well, thanks so much again to everybody. Thanks to all our mods in chat. And if you're on Twitch right now, stick around for the raid and go back to this Kickstarter. We'll see you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye.